What's up? Not much. You? How are you, man? Guess what I saw today? Um, Check this out. Look at this. You see this? Ooh. This is my future. In One the of 63 million in the world, 3.5. 3.5 million, 63 feet long, 4,000 horsepower, 70 mile power top speed. What does the inside look like? I want to see more of this. It's Connor McGregor. Wait, let me, since I learned oh, how to, God. since, since I learned how to zoom in. <laughs> oh, how do you do it? You hit command. Well, on a Mac, it's command plus, and then the plus sign. Um, yeah, look at that fucking shit. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if that comes with like its own crew. Like you pay for a crew to drive it while you just chill in the back. I mean, if you have the money to be spending you know, buy a boat. Well, 3.5 is not that bad, really, I guess, but still, I mean. No, I mean, if you, like, Bezos's yacht is like 100 million, so it's like. Yeah, but that's only 63 feet long. I mean, <laughs> you're getting boat, like, crew when you're getting, like, big, big boats, you know? Like, yeah, you, that... could, you could drive this. It might be hard to dock if you haven't done it, but I'm, you, I'm sure you could learn. So this is what I mean. I don't mean, like, do you need to get a crew? I'm saying, like, does Conor McGregor, when he buys this, he probably is he driving the fucking thing or is he just no, no. he's probably getting a crew to drive to drive it and he probably has his chef on board and all that kind of shit. You know? I would want to drive it though if it was mine. I mean, if this is a boat that's four thousand horsepower, fucking right, you want to drive it. I'd be like, I'd be like, get me out of the get me out of the marina and yeah. then and then give me the fucking steering wheel. Yeah, and then you can take it back. <laughs> I'll, do it, I'll do it in open water where it's safer. <laughs> Look at that, man. It's like a king size bed in this fucking thing. Yeah, it's nice, really nice. So I saw this today and I'm like, you know what? I, I, I don't. Alcantara, yeah. you know? Yeah, I don't think I want a full blown yacht. I think I just want this. Yeah, like a speedboat yacht. Yeah, like this is badass to me. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Um, Am I crazy for wanting a yacht or no, right? I mean, everybody wants a fucking yacht. It's just like boat, boat, like ownership and maintenance. It's just like the biggest pain in the dick ever, you know? Yeah, I know. Like you would drive that thing for one day and it would be like, like a year's mortgage of a home, you know? I think, uh, so my brother bought a boat and I think he said it was like, I don't know what the fuck he says, a hundred bucks an hour in gas or something like that. Yeah. I mean, That's my sick. family used to own a big power yacht. Like that could sleep, yeah. you know, eight, eight people had a full kitchen, bathroom, everything. Yeah. Um, and this is like, you know, 90 to 2000 for that 10 years there. Yeah. And even then, man, like to, you know, it had two inboard 454 V8s, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, by today's, like that's back in the day when gas was 60 cents a liter, you know, you're yeah. paying double that now. And that would cost you, you know, five, 10 grand to drive that for the summer, you know? Is it worth it though? I mean, I think if I you mean, have the, if you have the money. Is, value is perceived, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Paul, so what are you doing? Are you kidding? If it's you, then fucking right it is, you know? Paul, can you hear me? No, he's of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known better to ask. <laughs> Now his mic's off. Paul, can you hear me? Paul. What? <laughs> yeah, I got you. Oh, hang on. You didn't plug it in again, did you? No, nope, it's plugged in. <laughs> but for some reason, I can't hear you that well. Are you sure it's plugged in? Turn your volume up. Oh, I can only hear you in my right ear right now. Check the uh, little arrow. Click the little arrow. Make sure it's going to your headphones and not through your computer. Okay. Now, how about now? I'm not sure what you meant. <laughs> the little arrow where the mute thing is there see where yeah. mute is and then there's an arrow to the right of it says mute my audio click that yeah and then go select a speaker you know there you go that's oh a better, that's a better discussion. yeah okay hang on so pick pick what you want yep now can you hear us is that any better no I, we can hear you fine can you yeah, yeah well yeah. i could just listen <laughs> <laughs> I'll just point. I'll just point at you, and I want you to talk. <laughs> okay, let me try one thing, dude. You do this every week. How do you not get? I'm it? sorry. No, you don't have to be I sorry. To, just like how do you? I not... had to set up a makeshift studio here because we're renovating a basement. Yeah, that's so right. I know. Things are not where they're supposed to be. Anyway, can you, can hear, you, know. can you hear us? I can hear you. It's just kind of Muffin. faint. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think the headphones. Why don't you are... just do it without the Wait headphones? Wait a minute, one sec, one sec. Yeah. Maybe this podcast would do better if we we're more professional. What do you think, Ian? <laughs> no, I think it would do worse. You think so? Uh, this stuff is hilarious. What? How about can you now? Hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. We can always hear you. No, that didn't do anything. 
No, I can't hear you at all. Hang on. In the side. Tony. Call the wife. Do you want to log off and log back on? Oh, he Wait, can't hear us. That no, that's right. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just, gonna, yeah. I'm going to. Should I leave his? Yeah, I'll just leave it. He'll come back. Anyways. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, boat owning seems intimidating to me. Well, yeah, man. And then like, you know, you got a boat like that. You can't put in any tiny marina. You're going to pay marina fees. You got to winterize that in Canada. You know, you're pulling that out of the water and shrink wrapping it and winterizing it. That's expensive. That's what seems so intimidating. It's like, you know, if you yeah. buy an expensive car, you don't have to do anything. You put the car in your garage and you plug it in the wintertime. Good to go. And that's it. With the boat, there's so many extra fees. I'm like, yeah, I, I've looked at getting like even moderate sized boats and my parents who own big boats were like, don't fucking do it. No. That's that's what I'm thinking. Cause I've looked at like, you know, obviously small boats just for like me and the wife and a couple friends to like, yeah, we'll fuck around in the summertime. But then, like you said, I start factoring in the gas, you start factoring in marina fees and shit. And I'm like, and then what am I gonna do with the winter time? I got to like store it somewhere and shit. Yeah. So lot. yeah, maybe, maybe I'll just wait till oh, when we, you know, in the winter, like you had to get it like craned out of the water. They like shrink yeah. wrap it. It's put up on like stilts, you know, it's like, it's a big process, you know? I think it's something that you do when you're like rich. Like when you got yeah, money to, when you got money to burn a massive hobby, but um, yes, in this day and age, large boats are generally owned by quite wealthy people. Yeah. 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 Well, or I'm, unless you're going to live on it, but I mean, at that point you'd get a sailboat, you wouldn't get a power yacht. You know? Could you live on a boat? I could live on a boat, not uh, a sailboat. Like if I got a massive yacht, let's say, let's say, okay. I mean, a sailboat would make a lot more sense to live on. Cause you can go in a lot deeper water and you can go a lot farther and it's a lot cheaper. Right. 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 Okay. But <laughs> there's the wife. Hi, Tony. Oh, she can't hear us either. <laughs> oh, he put the screen. Down. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to do like people that do like real boating all own sailboats, you know? No, no, no. I know. But I'm thinking like, okay, think of this scenario. So you own like a million dollar house, right? Sure. What would be the difference between owning a million dollar house or selling a million dollar house and buying a million dollar boat that you could live on? I mean, it's the same thing as selling and buying a, you know, $600,000 RV, like an A-class RV and living on it, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, could you do that though? Or would that get like, would you get sick of living on a boat? Uh, I mean, you have to really love the water. That's for sure. You know, uh, I think but, like, obviously in Canada, you couldn't do that. I mean, you'd have to be yeah. living down, down South, you know, in the keys or something, but. Uh, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely possible and it could be cool. I mean, I don't think it'd be something you'd want to do for the rest of your life, but you know, say you sold your house and you're like, Hey, I'm going to do this for five years, three years, two like years. If, you know? if you're 60, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, I'm just going to yeah. live on my boat and whatever, right. Anywhere in the world. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I could do that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you guys shit on me for my picks last week and then you guys all lost. Yeah. I know. <laughs> hey, wait. I'll, you got to give me props. So I'm the only one who knew about Tim and I put Tim in second and he came second. I knew about Tim. You didn't know about Tim. Like I knew about Tim. I knew. About Tim. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely knew more about Tim than I did. It was a good show, man. I mean, I have to give it to those European guys. Like for some of those guys being not as known to like the North American bodybuilding scene, they put on a fucking good show, man. Those guys right through fifth were all in really good shape. Some, some of the guys had good muscularity. They were really complete. Yeah. I found a one thing, a lot of these guys too, like, you know, they're, they're conditioning and they're, especially their leg development. A lot of these guys like flat and stuff, their quad development is crazy. You know, you him, William Martins, they got really good legs. Uh, conditioning was all good, really good. I mean, Tim's conditioning was awesome. Andre's was awesome. Presty. Yeah. Uh, you know, overall it was a very impressive show. I mean, like, obviously these guys aren't going to, you know, go in and probably win, you know, the average New York pro or be a top five at Arnold, but, I mean, for a show like that, when you initially look at the lineup and you're kind of like, eh, there's nobody, it was a good show. I was, you know, I, I, I enjoyed watching it. And whoever put on the show, these big man people, the stream was fucking A1 quality. Like, I, you know, it's funny. I didn't even know there was a fucking stream. Yeah, it was, it was really good, man. And it, I, it, it's shame on you, Ian, for not telling me. I mean, I literally, 20 minutes before the show started, put it on, you know? Like, yeah, but we're friends. How do you not message me and go, hey, there's a stream? <laughs> Go watch the stream. I was watching it at the gym while I was training, but yeah, I should have texted you, right? Can you hear uh, us? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Paul's in. How are you, man? Yeah. 
I'm good. Sorry, guys. I know it happens every time. I'm sorry. I got a. Don't be sorry. It's part of your charm. Yeah. Well, I know it's probably frustrating. <laughs> no, it's not. It's really not. I think actually uh, fans of the show have grown to uh, like that part of your, yeah. <laughs> like they like your entrance. <laughs> yeah. We're doing renovations down here right now. So everything's all messed up down here. So I had to kind of like plug things in a different room and stuff. Everybody's got something. Guy answers his calls in the, in the car and you know, yeah. Paul, where is guy for 20 minutes. He's coming. He's, he's going to be, he wanted to be more late than you. So he's, yeah. he's going to Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tried to be on time this time. I was close. What? Hey, minutes. what do you, uh, before you, before we go back to the shows, what do you think of this, Paul? You think I should own that one day? Whew. Well, we talked about this, right? Well, show, show them the other picture on, on the, on the trailer. So you can see how big this thing really is. Keep going. Like that's a big oh, ass. Paul. <laughs> that's huge. Is that considered? Yeah, but look, uh, Paul, there's, there's two chairs for me and you. We just sit there. And- <laughs> yeah, as long as you don't drive it like you do a car for what? We talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's open water. Nobody can get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's the only part. Yeah. Do you? I can't do you, swim either. Do you care about shit like this, Paul? Do you aspire boats? to? Not just boats, but do you aspire to any? I know you're not really a material person, so do you care about no, shit like well, this? Not a- I'm not, I'm not much of a boater. Like I don't mind doing it once in a while with friends, you know, but I wouldn't go out on my own very often. I don't think. But what so about, a is boat, there, sorry, go ahead. The boat wouldn't be something that I'd buy for myself. Is there anything material that you would, or, that you ha, are sought or are thinking of one day of owning like something like that, like a boat or something like that? Not a boat, but you know, nicer car for sure. Um, you know, nicer house. You know, those things. So like realistic things. Yeah. Like, like yeah. mature, like mature things. Yeah. I'm not into the toy. You know, I'm not into the toys so much, you know? Um, None. You can't think of any toy shit, like a jet ski or an ATV or like a. So if I had property to go on, yeah. An ATV would be awesome. Like, a you know? six, like one of the six side-by-sides. Like one of yeah. those. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like, those are nice. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah. So would be, be fun too, you know, but. What about, uh, but, a, know, what, what about a motorcycle? Would you ever get a motorcycle? I need somebody to ride with. You know what I can see Paul getting? I can see Paul getting, and my dad has one of them. They're actually I, know, I know what you're going to say. What, a Honda? No, no the, BR, Honda the, the, the Can-Am BRPs with the two in the front, one in the back. Oh, the two wheels oh, in the front. Oh, I see those. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. Really nice. <laughs> my dad has one. Like yeah. My dad used to drive like normal motorcycles, but yeah. my dad's yeah. 75 now, and him and his wife do like far, far stuff. Like He drives out to yeah. BC all the time and you know yeah. does stuff like this. Um, and with the three wheels, it's just a little more comfortable for his age. They have a big trailer they put behind it. Like it's, it's yeah. cool, man. Like this thing, the technology on this thing, man, it's like getting an AMG Mercedes. It's like, so wait a second. Like he GPS, drives heated seats, plug it in for the fucking crazy. Wait, really? so he I... drives, he drives like this three wheel bike to BC all the time. Really? really? Man, when my dad, what's, first it, started... what's it called? You know, I want to look it up. Uh, Can-Am Spider. Your dad I lives in Ottawa. I have seen that. Yeah. He lives in Carlton place. Yeah. Wow. Your dad drives this to BC from Ottawa. I see these; they're pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's intense, man. I don't think I can yeah. do that. No, but like, see, like go like a the like, nicer nicer ones. Yeah, like these are sporterized ones, you know. Yeah, like yeah, he yeah, yeah. like one with that's you know got the like, bags and like, yeah, like this one. Yeah, his this doesn't look quite that gay, but yeah, it's it's like <laughs> more like <laughs> see the blue one, that blue one there, bottom left blue one. Like kind of like this. Yeah. You're not allowed. Oh, to that's say, awesome. You're not allowed to say that, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get canceled now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? If I was gonna ride something, that would be it. Yeah. Paul, would, Paul, would you ride a back? Would you ride bitch on this if I bought? No, it? no, 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 no. I'm not riding bitch. No way. No way. <laughs> we just get our own. We gotta get segue. I want to get segways, Fred. Yeah, Paul wants a segue really bad. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, he saw. Can't. The things, the thing's super cool though. I mean, like, and you know, you can rip like super far on it comfortably. Like, it's it's a really nice thing. Well, I mean, fuck if he's drive, driving to BC on that, I can only well, imagine. My dad, so my dad, when he he drove bikes, like you know, when he was young, he grew up in like northern butt fuck, you know, yeah. Saskatchewan, Alberta, whatever. He drove you know little motorcycles and dirt bikes without a license, just like everyone kind of did around then. Um, and then when my parents got divorced, so like ninety nine two thousand, my yeah. dad got a bike license. And like the day he got a bike license, he had already owned, he already owned a bike, so he bought it before he had the license. Yeah, got a, a bike license or got a bike like a 
it's a, a Suzuki cavalcade. It's almost like a gold wing, you know, like the big yeah. like, touring bikes. Yeah, and my yeah. dad's like five, seven, one sixty. you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can't put first, his down. first day, he like comes home with a license, hops on the bike, drove it all the way to BC by himself. Are you wow. fucking serious? Day one. <laughs> yeah, literally drove Can it all I the way to BC. I got to tell you, I'm so jealous of your dad, man. That's yeah, like, yeah. that's the kind of shit I want to do. Yeah, he just fucking peace, you know? Like, obviously, you know, he is fresh in divorce and want to like, you know, get out there and do something. His family lives out in Kelowna or did, you know, when his parents were alive. So he just hopped on it and fucking, he's like, there's no better way to learn a bike than drive across the country. So, yeah, yeah, you, think we could, so. you think we could do that, Paul? Or wives would probably leave us, eh? Yeah. We'd probably be divorced by the time we got back. For sure. I'd, my stuff would be outside probably in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> it would be such a, such a fun trip, though. It would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he's done it. They've done like, you know, the whole like continental US, like, you know, down all the way to Arizona and back up to BC and across. Like they've done the whole shebang, you know. I gotta really talk good. to your dad. Your dad's gotta give me some inspiration or some 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 strategies about how to do this. I've i these are <laughs> these are things I've wanted to do since I was like sixteen and I've just never you know, yeah. driving to California or driving to BC or that yeah, kind of shit. No. I've never it was funny too, the first year I did the Olympia in twenty eighteen yeah. wasn't even planned. They had driven their bike uh down through uh like, you know, and through Vegas and up that way. And they'd gone see like the Grand Canyon, stuff like that. He said they were in Vegas and they were driving down. There was one of the big Olympia posters. Yeah. Um, and there was, oh no, so no, it would have been earlier than this. It would have been 2015. Cause it was whatever year I, after I turned pro and I had a, a one-year contract with uh, flex magazine Yeah. and they had the big flex magazine, like Olympia poster. And I was on it and my That's dad didn't know like anything going on about this. Yeah. And he's driving through Vegas and sees a huge poster with his kid on. He's like, that's, that's, that's I get a, I get awesome. this picture of my dad sends it to me off this big billboard in Vegas. He's like, "This is cool," you know. That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. Fuck man, that that's sounds awesome. like I'm so jealous of those trips. I don't know why I never did that. Like, have you well, ever done stuff like that, it? Ian? Uh, I've done it, I've done here to BC in an RV, like yeah, with your dad though, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've but done never times I've done to BC seven or eight times in the RV. Yeah, but you've never just gone on your own or got in a car with Melissa and fucked off somewhere like that. No. Paul, have you ever done anything like that? No, no, I've never done anything you think like it's that. Cause we're, you think it's because we're bodybuilders and we're fucking tied to our food and training all the time? Or? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a home body too. You know, I like being home. Yeah, I don't know. So I'm there's boring. nothing boring. So there's nothing exciting to you about making that drive? To me? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's fun when you don't have to do the driving. But that's yeah, the, that's the sure. fun part to me is the driving. Well, I mean, see, this is why the, the memories for me are so awesome because like, I was a kid and I was in an RV. So like, I didn't have to drive, you know, like I would hang out in the back and I get to eat and play my video games and I could go right. sit up with my dad and yeah, listen yeah. to fucking Garth Brooks or whatever the fuck, you know, like, yeah, chill. yeah, it was awesome for me, you know, and then we'd park for the night at like a KOA or campground and, you know, yeah. it was awesome, you know, it was yeah. good That's just like, memories of those, you know, I'd love to do something like that now, you know, yeah. with the kids, you know, if we had you in summer, jump in their yeah, RV, they have a website you know, for RV easy, RV easy, why, and you can rent them like Airbnb, like, rvs big trailers anything off there and the prices are really good I mean, yeah we talked about it we talked about doing it a little while ago and then some other stuff came up and we couldn't make it happen right now but i'm gonna, um, get, I'm gonna get this can-am spider i'm gonna get i'm gonna buy myself one i'm gonna buy summer you, one. you don't you don't even need a, a motorcycle license to own one of those no really? car license so you, because it doesn't you don't lean like a bike so you have yeah. to take a course for the spider if you don't have a bike license if yeah. you have a bike license then obviously you're fine but yeah. if you don't want to get a full do like the full m2 whatever you yeah. can do like a weekend, you know, Can-Am spider course and you're good to go. Really? I mean, there's really no, it's not driving a motorcycle at all. You're closer to driving an ATV than a motorcycle. I, like, think, I, could, I think I could drive. Like, this looks pretty cool. I think I could. They're probably easy to drive, I would imagine. And no, no, I, I know I could drive it. I just mean, like, I wonder if I would the, feel. The sporterized ones you can get that are like skeletonized that don't have like, you know, that have more open wheel fairings and like stuff like that. Look really cool, man. Yeah. I, I, I like this. I and some like of these are pretty blue. powerful. Like, you know, they're, they're you can get them with you know, 1500 CC, like over hundred horsepower, 150 horsepower. Like they can go pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen them on the road before. They look really yeah. cool. And they got really good tech in them. Cause they're made for like, you look know, this one ring and you know, you can do a lot of cool stuff with them. That's fucking badass. Yeah. I like that one better, but yeah, uh, super easy to drive soup, like sitting on it, man. It's so comfortable. Like you sit on, you're like, I could sit on this all day. hundred percent. Yeah. So I got I to buy, buy one for me and one for summer and then drive to Vegas for, yeah. the, for the Olympia. You know, that'd be great for your day to day. You know, I drive oh, that everywhere. Because I mean, like, and even the bag. <laughs> I would love to see you on this, Paul. I mean, even this, like, look at the bag. You can easily throw your gym bag in there. Like, it's yeah. Uh, no problem. Yeah. 
I drive, take that everywhere. I take it to work. Paul, if you, like, if okay, you drive look at, the look at the dash on it there. See that one? Which like, one? See that? Yeah, that. The dash of it in the center. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. In the center of the main screen, not the side screen. Oh, yeah, there right there, Fuad. Yeah, but like, you know, they're like super nice, man. Like, you get a lot yeah. of controls in there. Like, they'll have full plug in so you can you know, have stereo playing in your helmet and everything, you know? Huh. He, my dad has it even too, so it hooks up into his jacket and they have like heated and cool jackets and pants, you know? Huh. Oh, there's a good one. I like uh, all the black, pants? black. Yeah, so like, you'll have a full heated like lining in his suit that, that plugs into the bike. <sighs> Paul, if this, oh. if this podcast. Yeah, there's a cool one for you, Fuad. Go up. Where? Up, right side, up one more. There, top row right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that paul if this podcast ever takes off i'm gonna buy you one of these okay okay um should see if one of these places will sponsor the podcast Fred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we've, we've been talking about it for fucking 10 minutes i guess we could can ask now yeah um what uh, how much you sell for they're not cheap no oh i'm sure they, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say 40 40 right? yeah i think they're like 25 to 40 grand depending how fancy you want to get let's see really price. 20, 21 <clears throat> price is and they're gas right Ian? Yeah. Shopping 369. They start at 28. And if you get like a good one with heated seats, storage capacity, they're about 20, uh, 28. Sorry, start at 24, go up to 28. And I think this is US though. So yeah. It's about- nothing. It's like okay. it's like 400 bucks a month. 35 grand. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's like huh. if you stop eating McDonald's, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like your McDonald's payment. <laughs> That'd be really convenient though for your day to day activities. Except for when it's raining, or for snowing. All raining, yeah. Or snowing. No, you got this. Uh, you got a heated soup. Yeah, but you're still it's still going to be snowing. <laughs> you're out out in the open. But man, yeah. yeah. Like, if you look at their website, and, like you could like you know customize it, like pick all the displays and the you know all the the how skeletonized <laughs> you want it. Okay, can we yeah. can we can we change change the topic for one second? Yep. Paul, when are you going to get your nipples pierced? <laughs> Well, it's going to have to be next week because I'm leaving for Vancouver on Thursday morning. Can we film it for YouTube? Like the actual Piercing. moment? Yes. How about the aftermath, the bloody aftermath? No, I want to, I want to get you getting it pierced. I, want to I don't do your... well with pain, Fouad. It's not, I'm, it's not going to be very graceful. Well, man, they're not bad at all, trust me. Really? No. Out of all the piercings, it's really, really not that bad. Really? I, well, I've never had anything else pierced except for it's, my, uh, my it's, eyebrow. It's a lot of it's pressure, but it's not pain. So the it's only, like a quick, the only piercing probably a quick, intense pain. It's not even a, a pain. It just feels like someone's pushing on you very hard, but it's not sharp, harsh pain. It's just like pressure, you know? The, is there like that snapping sound when they, when no, they, not at all. Okay. The only piercing I've had is my eyebrow. It didn't hurt at all. Me too. But you, know, you had your ears, didn't you? No, just my eyebrow. You didn't do your ears ever? Nope. Really? Nope. I did my own ear. But you I've did, done own, you did your own ear and you're worried about your nipples? Oh, I was a kid. No, I'm old yeah, and I'm you're old sensitive now. to pain. Yeah, your pain tolerance has gone down. <laughs> <laughs> no, as you get older, all those nerves die, and you know you're, you'll be less sensitive now. It's good. No, I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah. So but, I got to decide which one to do the torn, the torn pec side, or the or the good side. The good side. Do the good side. Yeah. So yeah. Fuad calls my yeah, torn pec side my tip. Show, man, I was I was pleasantly surprised with this. So now I can't zoom in for some reason. Command. I did. Now it's like it won't zoom in or out. I broke it. <clears throat> okay, so I don't know if anybody can you guys that's way too far for you guys to see, isn't it? I can see mine, but I, I can see well. So Presty one, Tim second, Martin's third. Yeah. I thought you think did it okay. Well, Ian actually or Paul, do you guys think the placings were where they should have been? I would have switched it around a little bit other than the top two, but yeah, I mean it was I, I wasn't like wildly surprised with it, but I would have probably put Vlad then uh theo then william but i mean they were all good i mean it was it was close between a bunch of them theo and william i think could have switched places and been fine i thought vlad was third i agree um adolf is definitely going to be a contender as soon as he builds his upper body up a little bit he was really impressive that's not adolf but yeah isn't this adolf on the the sixth oh no no it's christian wolski sorry this guy Mm. yeah yeah, i'm sorry that was my mistake but this guy really really impressed me at the show and uh, quads are crazy. Legs are crazy. Just needs a little bit more size in the upper body. Yeah. Yeah. But, sure. um, but he was, uh, he was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he took sixth. Um, I think he was the dark horse of the show for me. Like somebody that just stood out that I didn't even I agree. know was coming. Um, but yeah, so Presty won. So 
uh, me and Guy were the closest. And uh, I just I just edged out Paul because I got the second place right. Yeah, Paul. No, Paul. Yeah. You know, I shouldn't even have bet on this one because I really wasn't familiar with a lot of these guys in this lineup. So I really didn't know what I was talking about. So I, I shouldn't have bet anything. I don't know why I did that. I regret it now. Yeah, but but in in your defense, Guy was guessing too. Yeah, but Guy went last. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always stupid, and I always think I know the most, so I always go first. So <laughs> everyone everyone takes do. my knowledge and, and throws it back into a better order that makes it so they can always beat me. <laughs> you, know? you, do. you are always very overconfident. <laughs> You're like, that's it. I know the show's going to look like this. I know this guy's going to place here because of this. Hey, I got Tim right. That's all that matters. Okay. You did, I kept, yeah. you did I kept my nipples alive here. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. we talked about it. Are we going to go double or nothing? No. Well, if you if you pick the picks that you picked in the car earlier on the way to the gym, I will do double or nothing with you. Well, I don't. I got to look at the lineup again. And okay, always... fine. Let's take a look at the lineup. So we're going to break down Chicago. This is the crazy lineup. good lineup. The lineup. For yeah, Chicago. it's a great lineup. Okay, so. Paul thinks it's going to be Roly first. Mm-hmm. Wait, uh, hang on, Fuad, wait, 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 wait. Say anything. Let me write these down. No, that was not my final picks. No, no, it's not final. I just when when we do make them final, I want to write them down. Okay. Okay. So right now, Paul owes us a, a piercing. Yeah, a nipple piercing. <laughs> Guy wanted me to do my dick. <laughs> 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 it's worth a double or nothing yeah. okay well i don't know if we want to double or nothing let's look at this sick lineup who said that sick lineup sick. <laughs> <laughs> he likes, bro. is that how you pronounce it when there's eight c's i mean yeah, technically it would be sick <laughs> yeah like I, I was thinking more like sick yeah, yeah you got that. you're dragging it's the c so a, that... bunch of, a bunch of eyes and not a yeah, bunch you of need more eyes, eyes yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, okay, so Paul, you're yep. the IFBB judge so far, and you've lost all these bets. So I don't know yeah. how that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you okay. became a pro judge. Maybe I should be the pro judge. <laughs> well, it's been a couple of years for us, so I'm rusty. <laughs> um, okay, so are we, is this official now? Top I think five? this is. The, I think this is the lineup. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, we can still. We'll, we'll just talk about it. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, we'll, okay. This is just okay. I just want to know your. We, you can tell me your top five, and then we'll we'll fi- when we finalize it, we'll say. Final okay. picks. Well, I think Roly's, you know, the guy to beat, obviously. I think, I think, you know, most of us will agree with that. Um, and then I think the battle for second is going to be between um, um, Hunter and, uh, well, I, I, I think Hunter is going to be at for second myself. Um, okay, and I think the bad, the, the, there's going to be a battle there between um, uh, Shaban and, uh, and Max Charles, I think, for that third, four spot. So I talked you into it, is what you're saying? No. I just forgot that Max Charles is in the show. <laughs> full of shit. I forgot yeah. Max Charles is in the show. In the car, you were like, Max Charles is going to be low. third for sure. Sorry? In the car, you said Max Charles is going to be third place for where, sure. Where, where, no, do you, no. where do you think he'll place Max? Me? I think Max will probably be fifth. I agree. Really? Yeah. So who do you guys have third? I have Mo second, probably third. Shabam? Yeah, I think I think it's going to be a closer contest than people think between Shabon and Hunter. I think that's yeah, me too. a really good matchup. Yeah. yeah. Um, pretty different physiques, but both have good strengths. And and I think it'll be interesting. to. Contract. I think they both have the same weaknesses, but I think Hunter has more detail. So he might take it out that way. I can. Agree. I like Shabon. I just, I just think it's his third show in a short period of time. I think that might work against him. Yeah. But I think, you know, those guys, some of their work ethic, man, like I feel like Shabon is getting better, not worse. I, he yeah, got better last show. So new to having this much muscle and to peaking like this that I think he's going to continue to get better. I don't think he's really. Gonna, eh? But up today, he looked really fucking good. So did we all do we all have Roly winning? Yeah, I think so too. Right, we'll ask Guy when he gets on. But okay, so we all have Roly winning. I think there's going to be an interesting thing because like people like like Man, Phil, so many like, middle guys like. And I just say like someone like Philip Glahar, right? He could throw a wrench yeah. in all in all of it. Yeah, like, I like, mean, hidden Joseph Mackey. Yeah. Um, Hassan's, uh, Brett Wilkin, you know, like you have so many guys like in that kind of next group that are really good, you know? Mm-hmm. So Ian, who do you have for second? Who, if you had to pick one, I know you said there's a, you think there's going to be a battle for, I, I say Hunter. <clears throat> so Hunter second. 
I'm, but I, I, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna bet on this show in terms of a bet because I'm, I'm gonna be competing against these guys next show, so I'm gonna stay out of it from official betting. Fair enough. Why does that matter? Because I don't want to, like, you know, like I don't want to fucking. Oh, you think it'll get shitty? You mean? I yeah, I just don't want to like put a guy in fifth and he comes second, then he's mad when I compete against him next week, or you know. Like, <laughs> okay. Well, I'd rather just stay out of this one. You know? Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, we I should still... get a pass too then. Why do you want to? We, you can all have a pass. We don't have to do this if you guys. No, I mean from last week. No, no, wait. Oh, that was an official bet. I should get, <laughs> a, pass. I should get a pass too. He said. <laughs> Who I'm honestly very excited to see, and he hasn't posted any recent pictures, is the Zach Merkel kid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he could be a dark I, horse too, I think. The last picture I saw of Zach was at 275, and I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. How do you look at that weight foot? He looked really good. He's got very yeah. good shape. He's got very good shape. He's very balanced. He's, he's bat- a really tall guy. He's. Lacking a little bit in the chest and back, but he's structurally big. He's got really good quads. Yeah. I mean, um, he'll, I, he'll be good, man. If he if he's in good shape, which I think was the only kind of knock on him when he beat – because he beat Nick at Nationals, right? No, his, yeah. con- his conditioning was good when he won Nationals. It was good, but it wasn't – No, it wasn't, it wasn't pro level. It wasn't, it wasn't like like Hunter or Shabon are going to be, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, you know. But I'm, um, curi- I'm curious with Hunter, right? Because Hunter's conditioning – was great in Tampa, but then at the Olympia he slipped a little bit. So he I want to he looked a little tired by the Olympia. I want to see mm-hmm. I want to see which hunter shows up. I'm assuming it's going to be the same hunter as Tampa. I hope so. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously with more muscle, but conditioning wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so second place, you think Hunter Paul? Who do you think third, Paul? Well, I wanted to say Max, but now you guys got me thinking about your band so much. But no, I'm going to stick with Max Charles. You're the judge, man. Be the I'll judge. stick with Max Charles. Okay, Max Charles. Don't doubt yourself, Paul. I'm not. Okay, so Ian, who do you have? You have Siobhan third? I said I'm not betting on this one. Oh, you're not betting on So you're not even going to place them. Okay. I won't place them, no. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I'll give commentary. That's about it. Okay, so, and then Paul, you have, so Charles third. Who do you have fourth? Who do you think of Siobhan. fourth? Siobhan fourth. Yeah. Wow, Siobhan slipped to fourth. I just, like I said, I think it's his third show. I think it might work against him. That's a possibility. It's a good, it's a good theory. Um, who do you think is going to be fifth? Either way here, if, if uh, Siobhan's in the top five, or him in, in Antisan, or I, I don't even know if it matters at this point, they both solidify themselves Olympia bursts on points. So I think okay. it's... As long as they're both how top many, five. How many people go for points? The to top three in the points? Right now, it's Ellie, Mom, Hassan, and Siobhan. Um, oh, I know, but do they only take the highest top three in points? It's just top three, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Which is those guys right now. So <laughs> if they're both, if any of those two are in the top five here, they're like almost guaranteed. Who's who's Islam Muhammad? Does anybody know who that is? Yeah, he's he's decent. I think he's the guy with the ponytail, right? Or he had a ponytail. Look him up. I, I could be incorrect here, so. Looks yeah. like he has a ponytail. Yeah, this guy was good. He won the amateur Olympia at the Small Olympia, waist. remember? Tiny waist. Yeah. He won the amateur Olympia at the Olympia like in 2019 or something. He did Pretty tamper cool. with me, I think, last year or two years ago, but and didn't do as great as I thought he would. But he's he's good. He's got some good uh good shape. He's, he's got enough to he's bigger than you think. Yeah. See, like look. Yeah, yeah those are big quads. Small waist, eh, for a big guy. Mm-hmm. Obviously, lacking some detail. I don't know in the quads. I don't know if it's just the pose. Yeah, it's a, mm-hmm. little, a little better there. Yeah, it looks Big good. Arms. It looks good. Yeah, I'd like to see more shots though on the stage before I make a judgment. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's one. Yeah, he's got a nice shape. I wonder. I can't tell how big he is though. He's he's a decent size. He's not small. Yeah. That could be a that could be a surprise yeah. for some people. Yeah. That's a good shot. It's a really good shot. Good back too. Pretty good from the yeah. back, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that could surprise some people. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is the New York where he did. Let's see what he looks like. He's got a good he, waist, man. He wasn't great at this show. His conditioning was a little. He's got a really good yeah. structure. He's got a small great waist. Good, yeah. good quads, wide shoulders, good arms. Arms are full as fuck. Good, good delts. Oh, huh. those arms are a little suspect. Yeah, look at that. No, they're not too bad. It's, it's just biceps. He needs I mean, to improve the conditioning a little. I bit. mean, I I don't care either way. So uh, you know, I'm not trying to. I yeah, think arms. Like, who gives a shit? 
his yeah. post needs to be fixed. Yeah. yeah. He, he poses is a little weird, but yeah, he does. Kind of, <laughs> you know. I feel like his back needs to be a little bit work because his quads are so good. Mm -hmm. Feels like his lats are lagging I don't a little see bit. Him as a top five, but he'll definitely be in the second call out. I think. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not thinking top five. I'm trying to think of like a Zach Merkel, Brett Wilkins, yeah, kind of kind of matchup. I, I think Brett will get in that first call out. Yeah. Oh, I'll take that bet. I don't think so. Not because I think Brett's bad. I actually think Brett's got a really, really nice shape. I think Brett's going to be still a little on the smaller side, but I think his lines are really clean. I think his conditioning is probably going to be arguably probably the best in the show. Hmm. So, I mean, it depends if a couple guys slip with the conditioning, um, you know, and if he do, if he holds his own well enough size wise. Uh, the thing is, I just haven't seen him next to like I saw him next in the guest posing next to Nick, where he he held his own size wise. But but it's different when you're on stage, but. You know, that abs and thighs he's posted, like his lines are really clean. Um, you know, and I, I think he could he could do well here for sure. Yeah. How is uh, Hassan looking this time? Any updated shots of him? I nice. think I'm going to say, I think I'm going to say Brett's going to be in the second round, second call out. And that's not to flame him at all. It's a really deep yeah, lineup. He's still a little on the narrow side, but I mean, it's a very nice, clean look, you know? Yeah. yeah. I just, I just don't know if he's going to hold up size wise. But then again, it's like you said, I haven't seen him next to anybody. So I don't know for sure. Yeah. See, the only guy this, that he trains with every day is is Martin. Martin, there. yeah, Martin's yeah. like five seven, two thirty five kind of thing. So it's hard to tell, right? Mm. Yeah, he's got great shape, man. It's just I, I just don't know how big he is, so it's hard to place him. Yeah, this well, is his debut. We'll know this weekend. Yeah, yeah, this is his debut. Like it's a really, you know, it's it's, a, it's his open debut. He had competed in, as a two twelve. Oh right, okay. So he actually turned pro in classic. Yeah. Then did. A, a show or two in the 212 back in like 18 uh and then took the last two years off or whatever and then is back this year doing open okay so he's put on like 20 25 pounds of muscle for sure yeah. i need to see a back shot there he is that's a little bit more i like seeing being able to see this kind of stuff this gives a better perspective i need a back shot though somewhere there's him and nick see he looks good there yeah, Nick's really outsizing him like a lot. <laughs> yeah, Nick's gigantic, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there any back shots? I'm trying to find one here. There's one. Oh, it's got a good There's back. One there. Got a good back. Yeah, his back looked good for the front too. Is there a back double or just a back lat? Just a back. Lat. This side try. So that tries nice. I think he could. Um, I think he could. I, I don't know exactly what Zach looks like lately, but I think he might be able to beat Zach depending on his size. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to come down to if his conditioning and crispness out polishes Zach's big, bigger structure, you know? Yeah. But I, I really like Brett and I know he's been working really hard. So I'd like to see him do well. Yeah, but I mean, you could. I, 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 you know, I. When I hear things like that, it's like I agree, but at the same time, oh, it doesn't matter. Zach, yeah. Zach's a really nice guy. No, no, I, I just know Brett yeah. personally. That's why I'm. Oh, surprised. okay, okay. I just, I don't know either one of them personally. I just, I, you know, I had Zach on the podcast. I just, well, I, I used to work with Jansen, right? So I, know, I know Brett. And... I love Zach's shape. I mean, he reminds me for a big dude, eh? He's got great shape. He reminds me of fucking. Dennis Wolf in a way yeah. it could be a little bit yeah. bigger quads, but chest is the only like weak point I see right off the hop, but it's like it's his not... actual his back is actually the oh yeah they can see in that shot there yeah, yeah. let's see the back there. there I think it's the lighting though here Paul because you it could be because the last spread looks better because there's yeah, thick you can see the thickness here yep yeah. yeah. when you go back what it didn't look so yeah but it's, it's also the it's also because he's not in shape I mean once the fat right. fat's gone from here right this yeah. will come in more seven weeks out so yeah right could any side shots you know. No. That's it. I mean, I'm sure I can find one somewhere on his page. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing him though. There's a side chest. That's good. It's yeah. going to be a great show. Yeah, he's got yeah, good hamstring. Awesome. There's a side oh, chest. Oh, yeah. Do you ever get it through him when you were competing? Like where you'd see a lineup for a show and you were like in shape and close to competing, it would like give you anxiety. Like it's like I'm getting like almost like anxious FOMO, like not being part of the show, you know? Yeah. Every like I look at it, I'm like, fuck, I want to be in the show. And like, I, you know, it's, I, I see it and I get like antsy to, to be on stage, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm you're, you're, that. you're two weeks out again? Uh, two, two and a half. I'll be two right. this coming Saturday. I was three this past weekend. Okay. So yeah, it's okay. two weeks between the two shows. Okay. All right, Paul. So we're back to fifth place. 
Okay, so fifth. So <clears throat> so we still have Hassan Mustafa too. Yeah. Yep. Any any uh, any updated shots of him, Fue? Can you bring up his Instagram? Yeah, he, I, uh, for, he, I think for him, you should just base it off how he's looked every show because I think it's going to be pretty much the same. Yeah, it's probably not going to be a drastic difference. Yeah, I don't he think looks, he I looks different at this point. He looks different to me. And this is his what third show now or fourth? Fourth, I think. Fourth, which which could be good for him because I think the longer he stays in shape, the better right. chance that those glutes will come in. But I also saw that he posted the other day that he was two hundred seventy five pounds, like. That's Whoa. 20 pounds up, you know. Yeah, but this is what I this is what I'll tell you about Hassan. So the thing I think Hassan has been doing wrong this whole time is he's been under eating. I agree. And if I'm not mistaken, I think he has new coaching. No, oh, yeah? he's still with Aceto. He's still with Aceto? To, to my knowledge. Well, something's different because he looks different. He looks fuller. He looks like he's been eating or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't I don't know what it is, but this picture looks different to me. Yeah, so, I'll agree with you there, but I, the thing that all that matters for Hassan is the condition that his legs and glutes are in. Yeah, we know he's gigantic. His back no, 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 no. awesome. His I know there's awesome. All that matters is his glutes and quads. I know, I know that, but his upper body wasn't this shredded at the last show. So, uh, what, so what I'm yes, saying, I agree with you there. That's one day ago. Yeah, he's looking pretty hard there. So what I'm saying is, is if the upper body's harder, that means the lower body should be harder. Also, you would hope so. I would hope yeah. so. Yeah, I would hope yeah. so. Yeah. So uh, that that's what I'm basing it on. And like his chest is more striated, his arms look harder, yeah. his stomach is well, tighter. I can see that for sure, but I, I want to see it in the glutes, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go Brett Wilkins fifth. Hey. You're going Brett over Hassan? Yeah. Do you want to double or nothing this bet? You like fuck with me, you try to get me to... Uh... <laughs> You try to get me to rethink my uh, my picks again. No, because every time I do that, I end up fucking myself. No way. I'm sticking with it. Okay, Wilkins fifth. Yeah. Okay, who do you have? We have to go further than fifth though, because there's so many good good guys. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll end up uh, with six man first call out, so do six. No, no, we get there's there's like we should do the top ten here. This is a good fucking lineup. That's so a lot. Do you want to go that far? Well, we're already at five. I mean, let's just keep going until we get run out of good guys, which is there's like five more at least. <sighs> okay. Um. So like after, before. so Bill after, Clare, Bill Claire is really good. I know, I know. I, I, I like, I like Zach Merkel too, and I also, you know, and then I still have a son to put somewhere. The San, um, yeah, you got a lot of guys still. Zach, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and Joe Mackey still Joe too. Joe Mackey, he's looking good. Justin pictures. Mackey, yeah, really Justin good. Mackey for sure. Yeah. Uh, that Islam Muhammad that we took a picture that we took a look at. He looked good. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a tough show. Um, okay, I'm gonna go with um. I'm going to go Hassan, six. Hassan. Okay. Then Zach. Merkel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, eight. Phil Clark. Phil. Wait, who's my seven? You got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is Zach Merkel. And then Phil, yeah, okay. Eight, Phil Clark. Um, <laughs> nine, Joe Mackey. You know what you haven't you haven't picked Max Charles yet. Yeah. I think oh yeah, you did. Yeah. Max Charles was third. Max Charles was yeah. third. Sorry, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So after Phil um, Kahar. Uh after I had Phil Kahar was eight, right? Yeah. So um my final two is gonna be um Joe Mackey. Yep. And then Eslam Muhammad. Eslam. That's your top ten. Yeah. Man, it's a tough lineup. It's tough, man. <laughs> I think I nailed it though. I think I nailed it. <laughs> You, think feel you, good about it. you feel good about that one? I feel good about it. <laughs> I feel better than I did any other week so far. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go uh, Roly. Hunter. Siobhan. I'm going to run out of space to right here. Fuck. Um, Siobhan. <clears throat> Siobhan third. I'm going to say... Let's see, Max, Mackey, Mustafa. I'm going to say Mustafa. I'm going to say Mustafa fourth. Really? Matt, Mustafa's already beat Max Charles mm -hmm. in the same well, condition he was last he year. year. For last year, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go Hassan fourth. I'm going to say... Where did I put us on? 
You put Hassan. You put Hassan sixth. Uh. <laughs> you're, Wait, gonna re- okay. you're gonna change all your picks. I know you are. <laughs> Stick with your guns, man. <laughs> yeah, I gotta believe my picks. Hassan fourth. I'm gonna go. Uh, I think I'm gonna go Max fifth. Although Joe Mackey's been looking really good. Let me see. One second. Yeah, Mackey looks good. Joseph yeah. Mackey. I think he's just Joe. He's not Joseph. Yeah. There he is. Who's he working with now? He's working Dennis with Dennis James Chad. and oh, Chad Nichols. Yeah. He's got the Rammy, the Rammy combo. Yeah. Who's he with there in that picture? Where? Yeah, that's the that's first cool. picture. Dikembe. Oh, Dikembe Mutombo. Yeah. Uh, hmm. His good arms are just wild, eh? Yeah. yeah. Big ass set arms. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be good from the back. That's what I'm worried about. The thing with him is he's got lots this of... Is, this part, is crazy. It, it doesn't yeah. necessarily fit together super well in terms of stage bodybuilding, you know? I think yeah. it fits together well. Great. This, yeah. Like this is fit together perfectly. I just, yeah. I wonder what the back looks like. His back and, is decent, I think. It's just and there is no back. Oh, there's a back shot. Okay, you could use more lat. He's it's got the closing more high lats. Eh? It's but thick through the center. It's just it's a little they, empty it's in the pulled up too much and yeah, too far forward. Yeah. yeah, he's really got his elbows pulled forward there. The quad separation obviously needs a little work, but I mean it's it's a he's in good shape. He's big and full. Okay, I think I've seen enough. Um, so I'm looking at fifth place, Max Charles. I thought you picked Max. Yeah, you picked Max, didn't you? No, I got Hassan in fourth, and I'm still looking at fifth. Oh. Max, Max, Max. I'm going to say Max fifth. Max fifth. I'm going to say Phil Klahar sixth. Really? Yeah. Whew. I'm going to say Wilkins seven. Wow. No, no, wait. I think I might go with Merkel seven. Merkel seven. Wilkins eight. Um, Two more. Wait a minute. Fuck. Someone? Tough, isn't it? No, because I'm because I do want to put Mackey in there, just the Joseph Mackey. And yeah. Just look at who you have and who you think he can beat and who he can't beat. Well, that's what I'm looking at. I think he can beat Wilkins, and I think he can beat Zach. I just don't know for sure what his condition is going to be like from the back. Huh. Seth Shaw's in there too, but I think he's going to be too tall. Yeah. He's- He's a little thin, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck, this is a good lineup. It's a great lineup. I really think Zach Merkel and 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 uh, Brett Wilkins is going to be a good fight. I agree with you. I mm-hmm. think it's going to. I think it's going to be one of the that battle and uh, Hunter and Shaban. Those two mm-hmm. battles, I think, are going to be the biggest battles of the show. Yeah. So I want to leave Zach and Wilkins together. I kind of feel like Mackie fits with uh, Joseph Mackie fits with Klahar, but because they have the same similar build. Phil's yeah. a big guy, though, isn't he? So is Joseph like Mackie. M- Mackie's a big, tall guy. Yeah. Yeah. They're both tall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Phil Klahar is gigantic in person. Yeah. He's a big man. Yeah. I'm going to go Zach Mackie, Joseph Mackie. I'm not familiar with the first name there, the guy from the Czech Republic. You got, you know who he is, Ian? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think he's someone that's okay. going to be a top 10, though. No, no offense to him or anything. But. Okay. So I think I have, and this is not finalized. This is what I have wrote. Oh, what? Myself. We get to change our answer still? Well, we said we have, we're not going to finalize it yet. Okay. When are we going to finalize it? Well, I thought we'd wait for Guy to jump on. Okay. Oh, actually, that reminds me. Fuck. Hmm. I didn't... Uh... Did you send him invite? Shit. What? I don't think I said. Invite guy? I don't think I invited guy. (laughs) (laughs) 
One sec, I gotta do this real quick. I don't think he's he's probably gonna fucking forget to come on or something. Gaetano. Okay. So I got <clears throat> Roly, Hunter, Shaban, Hassan, Max is my top five. Cool. Then Klahar, Merkel, Joseph Mackey, Brett Wilkins, and Justin Mackey is 10. Cool. Good picks? I think. I mean, yeah. it's so hard, man. Like, it's, you know. Yeah, I'm pretty confident in my picks, actually. I'm pretty good with that. Yeah, you should be. I mean, they're, they're good. Paul, so who else is doing Tampa in with you that you know about? I mean, Char- Charles, Charles Griffin. Charles Griffin, and then probably everybody else from this show. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. That's going to be a good show. That's going to be a really good show, too. And Guy's doing that show, too, right? Yeah. What do you think, Paul? About, about what? You think your picks are better than mine? Yeah, I nailed my picks. I feel great about them. <laughs> yeah, don't tell, when guy comes on, don't tell him your picks at all, and let's see how vastly different or similar it is. You want to? Yeah. You want to double or nothing, Paul? Uh, okay. So if I lose, I'm again, not saying we should. I'm just asking. So don't don't throw it in my face. Don't do it, Paul. I I feel good about this show, Ian. I feel really good about it. I'm gonna tell you now. He's gonna beat you with those picks. <laughs> You're, you're gonna end up pick minute that you're wrong. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do, do, do you think he's? You think? Uh, Don't tell him that, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, Ian. Um, I don't know, man. Either. Uh, Paul, I haven't, lost, I haven't right? lost one this year yet. I know you're due. I'm just crushing what's the these difference, fucking right? shows. If I got to get one nipple done, what's both? Well, yeah, difference? that's actually true. It's a good way to think about it. Then you can, yeah. it, it is true. It takes almost no more time, and it's it's whatever. If yeah. you're going to look stupid with one nipple pierce, you might as well look stupid right. with two. How long do I got to have it for anyway? Four weeks. It was a month, yeah. Jeez. I'm going to take so many pictures in that month. Oh, man. My kids are going to be all over me. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you go swimming with your kids, they're going to be like, Daddy, why do you have your nipple pierced? Oh, man, I know. That's going to set a bad example for your little girls, man. I know. <laughs> I know. I think I'm going to put a big bandage over it for the whole four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. You guys want to answer a few questions? Sure. What, uh, what time is it? Nine. Okay. Let's see here. There was something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, Jeff Bezos got shot into the fucking into space. Yeah. What do you think about that? See what he said about it afterwards? 11 minutes. No, what did he say? He said something. I guess it's been um, a lot of people are upset about it. Well, he said Why? something like he, he thanked all the employees and customers of Amazon for funding his trip or something like that. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of shit. Because I, I guess Amazon's been accused of like, you know, not very good, um, not treating their employees really well. Oh, acute. Yeah. I mean, not very well is an understatement. Yeah. yeah it's, apparently it's, they're, it's supposed to be like the worst place on earth to work. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I, so I guess the social media world's pretty upset about what he said afterwards. Well, I mean, it, it's kind of insensitive, but it's true. I mean, yeah, it's true for sure, but it's very insensitive. Yeah. That's where his money came from. So what's he supposed yeah. to say? Yeah. I mean, why actually, why is it, why is that offensive? That's like uh, me, like like if I bought a yacht tomorrow, would it be offensive if I said thank you to all the buyers of hostile supplements? The, the, thing, the thing is that people are choosing to spend their money on Amazon. No one is yeah. for yeah. Anyone that's what I'm saying. Sure. So like, yeah. it's not it's not really you can't really be offended if the guy well, started. Plus, I think a lot of people were more cheesed off about it because it's like there's so many bad things going on in the world, and this guy's spending a billion dollars to shoot himself in space for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wasn't it like wasn't it like five point five billion dollars some shit? I'm insane, yeah. But I mean, like, yeah. it's just money. Do what the fuck you want. Well, I think yeah. if you have 143 billion of them or whatever it is now, he owns like yes. one, one or two or five billion. Man, big yeah. Deal. How's that change? Yeah. That's like me going out and spend a couple grand. No big deal, you know. Yeah, but yeah. Wasn't there something where like Amazon hasn't paid taxes like in any country for like the last like 10 years or something like that yeah. too? Yeah. So like the governments are making them rich too. You know, it's not just it's customers, yeah. employees. Yeah. Well, I think it's the government's fault for not creating the right laws to make sure these people have to pay. Yeah. yeah if, right. If you have that much money and you found the loopholes. That's the government's fault, not yours. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I agree for sure. Nobody yeah. wants to pay taxes. Like, I don't think anybody should be mad at Bezos for finding a, finding the loopholes. I think it's no, no. the government's hey. the government's job to make them pay. Right. Hate the find, game, not the player. Hate the game, not the player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so yeah, he went for like 11. Well, what's the point though of that? Like, what's the point of flying in space for 11 minutes? I don't know what the point is. See the world, man. I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I would do it, but I'm just like, yeah. Did it is do it like, like, is it like a rich person thing now? Yeah. You're is just it, in like a very elite, small group of people that have done that, you know? Yeah. I guess it's, elitist, it's elitist shit. You know, it's like, I've been to space. You haven't fuck you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah, you're that guy, rich. Yeah. 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 Who's next? I wonder if like Zuckerberg or someone's going to do it next, probably. Well, well the Virgin, the Virgin guy did it, right? Branson yeah. went first. Yeah, Branson went yeah. first. Yeah. And then now, isn't Musk supposed to go? Oh, probably. I'm yeah. surprised he didn't go first. $5.5 5 billion. Crazy. This is why people are upset. How much yeah. How much good do you think people could do with $5.5 5 billion? That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. But then you get into the argument of who's to say how much money somebody could make? Capitalism. Mm-hmm. Is there yeah. a, is there a limit to how much money somebody can make? What do you think, Paul? Is there a limit to how much money someone should should like, there, should should there, there, be, there, should there that... be a limit to how much money someone can make? And then once you get to a certain limit, the rest just goes back to the government or back to some fund of some sort. Uh, no, I don't think there should be a limit because that's capitalism. You know, I agree. It, it's if you start putting a cap on things, I think you you change your system and for the worse. Um, but I mean, there should be maybe a more appropriate amount of taxes paid too though you know yeah. i mean those loopholes maybe should be closed but um you know whatever what do you think ian i agree yeah. you think it's fine yeah i mean yes i'm, so, I'm all about, i'm all about capitalism yep yeah i wonder sometimes yeah what i'm all about capitalism too but like you got 104 let's just say 150 150 billion dollars mm-hmm. shouldn't you be like yeah, hey, you know, you know what? We're going to cap it at 100 billion. billion. You know how it is. He doesn't have 150 billion in cash. Like he's got right. it like assets. You know, I know. Yeah. Assets right. and yeah. like in, you know, the portfolios of these companies. And like it's, you know, it's so many different things. It's diversified. Right. Like you couldn't just the like, like liquidate it and have 140 billion in cash, and like go fucking party at a strip club, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But look how much his wealth has gone up since the pandemic began. But that's not, that's not his fault. That's not his fault. No, no, I know. I know. But I'm just saying. He, you know, he was like, just lucky enough that he was providing a service that was absolutely you know, needed or wanted at that time. You know, it's just yeah. man, man, man. People want to shop from home or they couldn't not shop from home and he had the infrastructure to provide, you know? Yeah. What I didn't know that I learned recently was that he owned the Washington Post. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's, yeah, something, which, that's something that kind of bothers me though. Yeah, because you're like, you know, because you kind of control information now too and you have like the biggest tech company in the world. But again, it goes back to capitalism. Like that's no different than, free enterprise or not. But that's no different than Mark Zuckerberg owning facebook and being able right. to censor whatever the fuck he wants to censor right right i know same, same thing but it's but it just makes you like kind of like when you read stuff at the end of the day the mind, if you you still we still all have the choice you still have the choice to purchase from amazon you still have the choice to use or not use facebook or instagram you have the choice to use or buy the washington post and read its media like these are no one is forcing anybody to do anything. If you oh, want to sure. pour it into these businesses and make a billionaire even richer, you also have to uh, remember that people will be like, rah, 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 well, the employees and this, and he has so much more. But he, as the business owner, you know how it is. You assume all the risk. Yeah, you know? yeah. If Amazon goes bankrupt or has big legal things, none of his fucking billion employees but have I don't, any, but I don't, does, you know? But I don't agree necessarily with how they treat their employees. I've seen oh, some. I, sure, but yeah. I, that's a whole different topic, but yes. Yeah. 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 No, but... um. Uh, where was I going to say about, oh, about monopoly. I think the issue is, see, you remember, cause you remember the social network that they started called parlor. Mm. And I think, I think it's back online now. Yeah. But I, I think when it got, it got too conservative, they were like, we're just going to shut your shit down. Cause Amazon owns the fucking servers. Right. It's like, I don't know. It's like, there's a limit to how much I think somebody can own because now it's like, well, if you don't like Facebook, you can go somewhere else. They're like, okay, fine. We're going to go somewhere else. So we're going to start parlor and we're going to be, more conservative and then they're like no no we don't like that either fuck it we're going to shut you down yeah so it is kind of a monopoly and they are they aren't really allowing you to choose they're kind of saying this is what you got take it or leave it yeah you know and then I mean? free speech is kind of gone and then free speech is kind of gone because they're controlling who can start a fucking website or who can start a, yeah. a social Control network platform yeah. yeah 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 it's uh i know it's, i don't know what their answers are to that stuff you know like because it's you know, complicated issues, obviously, but, uh, 
there's uh, you can understand why people are very skeptical about the things they read nowadays you know there's so much things are such you know it's either really tilted to the left or really tilted to the right the stuff that you read and somewhere in the middle is probably you know yeah the real honey. well let's stay away from politics i guess that's the yeah. reason why, i guess that's yeah. the reason why people watch the show is to stay away from bullshit yeah politics um okay Peter Molnar qualified for the Olympia thoughts on him last year versus the top five classic physique. Ian, you've already stated your thoughts on Peter Molnar, he, right? He's not qualified. Is he qualified for this Olympia? Uh, it says thoughts on him versus last year's top five of classic physique. That's oh, what they're saying. Sorry. Um, he's qualified this year. Is he, I know he's doing the Arnold UK or something, but which is a week before. So I don't see he'd be doing. So I want to show people before we go on, I just want to show people who Peter Molnar is. So they know what we're talking about. He's got a crazy physique. Um, I don't know if you know. I don't. People love Chris's physique, so it's not. It's not really the same as Chris's, but it's a very nice physique. Uh, was a stage shot. Fucking peeled. Yeah. It's more bodybuilding esque than classic. I would find, think find one from when he actually competed in classic, like now though, because he's obviously had to downsize to make classic. So it doesn't look quite the same as freaky as these, but yeah. Is that, well, that's got to be an older. I mean, you get an idea of what his shape, yeah. that's kind of what I'm trying to yeah. show is his shape. So people kind of know what we're talking about. Yeah. Super cool physique for sure. You don't think it's, you don't think he, where do you think he would be in the top five? Let's just say that. In the where do I think he would, would, he, would he be in the top five at the Olympia? I think he could be fifth, fourth to eighth, fourth to seventh. Yeah. So Breon beats him, Terrence Ruffin beats him. Yeah. Okay. I, I think those guys beat him. I think if you have a guy like Branch Chen back, he beats him. I think there's a couple guys that beat him. I think he's close with like guys like, you know, the Alex Cambroneros and those kind of guys, you know? I think he mm -hmm. beats Branch Chen. I disagree. I mean, conditioning wise, yes. In terms of his physique and his flow, I don't agree. You love yeah. that guy's physique. I'm obsessed with Branch Chen's physique. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, watched, I also watched Peter Mulner live when he won that classic show he did last year. And he yeah. barely edged out that second place guy who was kind of a nobody. You know, when he, when he downsized to make the classic, his, his look is not quite the same, you know? Like, yeah. go to his, his Instagram, you can see. Oops. See there, the second, the third photo, third photo. This one? Yeah. See, it's very different. Yeah, well, that's not really a good pose to be able to tell. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, cr crazy conditioning, crazy arms. He's got some awesome shots. You know, his chest is wild. Um, but I, I don't, it doesn't flow quite the same in certain shots and on stage than it yeah. appears in like the freaky photos, you know? I agree. Yeah. He looks like a smaller bodybuilder rather than a classic bodybuilder. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's definitely more bodybuilding esque. Yeah. yeah. Good body parts, though. Yeah. Crazy triceps. <laughs> um, okay. But that's why he got so well known because like guys that always have those freaky individual parts like that, that's what goes viral. You know, guys having that crazy side tricep there with massive Roly Winkler triceps and right. you know, crazy glute shots where it's like your glutes are like inside out. They're so peeled, you know, those yeah. are the kind of things that go viral on, on social media, right? Yeah, for sure. Do you ever think judges just get it wrong, Paul? Have they ever or do they ever? He says, do you, do you ever think judges just get it wrong? Yeah, I mean, you know, in a sport like this where it's a subject, you know, every, it's uh, based on opinion, not not so much, you know, points or whatever you want to say, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, you're always going to have disagreements, but um, there's, yeah, there's definitely been times where I saw, saw a show and I was like, yeah, I, I don't see it that way at all, you know? But and, you know, can I, there's can been you, examples of it in the past few years. Can you explain, can you explain to people that think it's all politics? Like, is it politics or is it people just have weird, like they just maybe don't pick the guy that you want them to pick or there's some other I type think, of favoritism. I think like sometimes 
things get lost in pictures for sure. I think being there in person is a different story altogether. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people lose track of that. And I think people don't understand that a lot of times people who are, you know, talking about pictures that they see on social media that like, you know, like, yeah, we talked about before, I think, you know, like even like in the trans, like so much gets lost in the transitions that you don't see you know, on stage. And those are so important, you know, and you don't see that in, in still photos, you know, I'll give you a perfect example of the transition I, idea. If I'm sending photos to a coach, if I want, I can send photos instead of video. Mm-hmm. And when I send photos, I could ch- make sure my stomach is pulled in perfectly and yeah. I'm never exhaling. And I'm you can pick exactly the yeah. photo. You I can yeah. pick exactly the right angle for everything. In video, you're kind of like, you can see the guy exhale, let his stomach loose, blah, blah, blah. That's why, when I, yeah. said, I only send videos. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but then I think it's also that people just don't believe you. Like, I think people are like, well, I saw a picture. Why do I need to be there? Or yeah, I saw right. a video or I saw a video. Why do I need to be there? So I don't yeah, think people really, I, I don't think people really get, maybe those people have never been to a bodybuilding show. Yeah. Maybe they just don't get the, why it's so different. People also yeah. don't understand that photography and lighting affect different people in different photos. So like, you'd be like, well, yeah, but everyone is at the same disadvantage in the photo, but it's like, it's not, no, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you sure. know not like that, you know, someone like Dennis Wolf might look way worse in a photo than, you know, a darker skin guy. Or somebody's or like, skin color. Yeah. Star. You know, it depends, right. right, where they're standing in the light, if they, you know, they're in the box in the middle of the stage, if they're off side stage, like so many things matter, right? I yeah, didn't and think... even, even, sorry, sorry but no, like ahead. even watching sorry. it on video, like a live feed, it's still not the same as being there in person yeah. because the lighting and everything still affects it so much. Well, I know the live feed for sure is not the same because I know they told me at the Arnold's because I asked them, I think one time I got off stage and I was watching some of the guys pose and I'm like, why do they look like softer like that? And he's like, yeah. no, nah. he's like for TV and lighting, we make it look like this. Well, so, I mean, the guys, even, so the guys look a certain way right so i mean even after i can't remember what show it was what show was it a couple of times ago where tyler Mannion posted that about the bikini girls it was a couple of shows back though and and uh every everyone was complaining that the bikini girls looked like way too hard and like it's like getting too close to figure conditioning and tyler Mannion went on his instagram he's like you guys need to stop looking at like granulated cell phone pictures what you're yeah. seeing and the people were not nearly as conditioned as the photos look you know mm-hmm. we were sitting in the front row i was there like it doesn't look at all like this you know right yeah yeah, yeah. it's so, tough let, let us do our job and you know if you want to critique the photos that's fine but you know we know what we're looking for yeah i wonder i wonder how many people make those comments and this is not a, this is not a slight against anybody because not everybody's been able to go to a bodybuilding show or, or been maybe there's no pro shows in their state or city or whatever. So I wonder how many people are making those comments that have never actually been to a show yeah. and, seen, and seen the difference live versus yeah. in a photo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, I think there's a lot of bodybuilding fans that are just, that are just consuming bodybuilding on social yeah. media, but they're not actually going to watch. Yeah. I, I think veteran fans of the sport understand what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. I think you're, you know, not so in depth fan would understand that. I mean, like the prime example too is, Anyone that you've ever heard ever that saw Dorian Yates live in a, in live says yeah. it's a completely different thing than in photos yeah. or videos. They're yeah. like, it was so much bigger, so much crazier, grainier, harder things that just, even those like, you know, crazy, you know, downlit shows that they used to have back in the nineties still didn't pick up, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've never heard anyone who saw him in person say that he looked as good in photos. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing I didn't actually consider that you said, Ian is, uh, I considered the skin color, right? Yeah. And I considered, I didn't consider the lighting might be brighter in one spot versus lighter in another spot. Yeah. Maybe that's versus, maybe that's versus that's angled one way or angled another way. So you're standing on the far right versus standing like second from the left or you something. You also know, like, you know, if a guy's standing, you know, where you can't necessarily see the line in the photo and a guy standing six to eight inches in front of the line versus a guy's maybe a little behind him. Yeah. yeah. The angles. Oh, the Ian's way bigger than this yeah, guy, but it's like, yeah. well, he's not actually. It's just perspective of a photo. He's staying, you know, a foot and a half in front of him. You know, that yeah. was actually that was actually evident in the uh, what show was it where Theo took fourth? It wasn't this yeah. last one, the one before it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Theo, because Theo kept standing, I, and all the pictures I saw him standing like a foot past the line, mm-hmm. and people would say, "Oh, it's just a foot. Who cares? It doesn't make no difference." Huge but difference. in every photo, he looked much bigger than everybody else yeah it, because he was standing I, that one foot closer i saw it happen to max charles at the uh, toronto pro um back in 16 or so i think that was, it was. my show yeah yeah that he was kept me saying like I, yeah that's right that was a yeah. show that you were in and, and yeah. um was that nathan nathan won. nathan won that show yeah yeah um <laughs> max kept yeah max kept stepping like a half step behind everybody i kept following him 
I yeah, no, really? yeah. no, no. What happened was Nathan kept stepping forward. Nathan was the one stepping. Is that what it was? Okay. So, so I kept stepping forward Everyone. with him. <laughs> okay. So, but but I think Max was the only nice one because he wouldn't. He was always like a half he a step behind, behind us. So yeah. Every time Nathan took a step forward, I took a step. I'm like, fuck you, man. I fucking <laughs> yeah. so I, I step, step forward. Step forward. I always step forward. Oh who's yeah. The, who's the worst for this? Actually, is Hottie. Hottie is the biggest line jumper ever, and I've been shooting <laughs> them. Where then, like by the time. The judge calls somebody be like, okay, guys, back on the line. You look and you're like eight feet past the line. Like, yeah. I'm like, I end up here. I'm like all the way at the end of the stage, you know? Well, because you're, you're not going to stage. Because that motherfucker, whoever is it, whoever it is, that guy knows what he's doing. 100%. He's stepping forward because he knows it's going to make him look bigger. It's going to make him look better. A couple photos that are going to go online that you're going to look fucking yeah. bonkers, you know? Like, yeah. 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 Strategic. We all, we all smart. It's, a smart, it's a smart move. Shit. I do it whenever I can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how uncomfortable are planes for you guys? Paul actually is, Paul's actually getting on one in a couple of days. How is yeah. it How uncomfortable are you? Because you're you're a little smaller than me and Ian. So are you okay? <laughs> um, like are you comfortable in a coach seat? Like does it fit fit well? No. Um <laughs> I like my like I don't like anything more than two hours or so on a flight. Yeah. Um this one's gonna be four hours, which is a little bit longer than I than I like. Um, but the way there though, I've got extra leg room. I'm not like uh, Tony and the kids are sitting behind me in the row behind me yeah. and i've got extra leg room in my seat so exit, even though we're the, sitting next to strangers you got the pardon? exit row you got the exit row. yeah yeah but then on the way home though i got a regular seat which is gonna suck so um i thought about calling my doctor i i did it last time i asked for asked her to give me an ativan for the flight yeah. and it works well like you just don't care you just I for just, four hours you're just they just fucking spring for the first class it's a couple hundred bucks more yeah there's four of us it's gonna be like fucking no let's leave them back there pardon just leave them back there <laughs> yeah like, well. listen listen i'm sorry i weigh 250 pounds you guys are all little <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna move up to first class you guys see yeah, you guys, they, they see you guys when we get home <laughs> You're like i'm older like i'm an old man i'm bigger than yeah. you guys i need the fucking i need the leg room yeah well i mean you were training the legs tomorrow that i gotta get on the plane thursday morning. oh that's right you're fucked yeah ian what's like what's it like being on a plane man is it a big deal or you always get the first class or what's up uh if I, I obviously find it uncomfortable, I can usually, I'm very, very, very good at sleeping on planes. Like I'm the kind of person that can like right now I could close my eyes for three minutes and fall asleep sitting in this chair on the show. Really? Like, really? That's know? a talent. Yeah. So I, I'm, I get very good at sleeping on planes. So usually I'm okay. And most of the time I fly with Melissa. So like, I don't care to like spill way over my armrests next to her. Yeah. 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 Um, if I'm not flying with her, I always fly first class. Cause like, I'm not dealing with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's usually not a big deal. I mean, like I just hate cause you're wedged in like this, my hands and arms go asleep instantly. Yeah, so, like yeah. you're sitting on those armrests and like, that's asleep instantly. I'm obviously not, I'm only five ten, So I'm not like crazy tall where I'm wearing too much about the leg room. It's more the width of the seat that really gets yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also cool. the thing I hate too, is when you're very thick front to back, which is like my biggest issue, then you can't put your head back. Cause like the, the seat behind you it's like this you know <laughs> yeah. so like i can't like you know you see melissa and she'll like lay and put her head back but for me it's like it's like 10 inches back yeah it's know? all the way back yeah <laughs> so like i'm trying to get comfortable and like i end up sleeping with my head down like this you know it's like it's yeah. just, you guys I'm are both trying. wide guys i i, I, I had to sit next to a out on a plane before a couple times yeah and uh, you guys are both wide so you guys yeah. are taking up a lot of room it, it would be nice to sit next to either one of you i flew to england once uh i think it was birmingham um for uh, the expo one year and i got stuck sitting between between two old ladies <laughs> and i'm the kind of as in the middle seat i never get a middle seat for some oh. reason they booked me a middle seat and i'm not fine flying first class to england because it's going to be an extra like two grand so i'm like yeah. fuck normally they sit me at the back of the plane because the back of the plane usually is an empty seat somewhere and i can kind of yeah. lean over but there was the plane was full they're like you're stuck right there i'm like fuck you know what man i'm i'm the kind of person who's like i hate like invading other people's space yeah so the whole flight i sat with my elbows tucked and like <laughs> and i was i was leaning forward oh. and i was resting my head on the seat in front of me yeah just, how long was that flight just so it was like six or eight hours something like that six hours, yeah. Oh. yeah just so the two ladies beside me could like sit normally because they saw me coming they're like oh shit like you you, <laughs> could, you could see the look on their face they're like oh, yeah fuck. So i'm like pick the seat. i don't want to make them their trip even worse they already know so i'm like trying to like not be an asshole so the whole fucking yeah. flight i'm just like this man oh, the worst fucking remember, flight of my life remember one show flying. me and hassan jama on a small plane were in the same row oh. at the very back 
And like, he's big too, you know? And there's yeah. only two seats on those small planes. Yeah, well, and we were across the aisles from each other and then there was people next to us and we were across the aisles at the very last row where the bathroom was. Oh. So like, you want to hang out into the aisle, but then this every time someone's coming or they're coming with the cart, you're yeah. getting bumped or you got to move over. So it's like, yeah. and we were flying to Mexico. It was the show I turned pro at. And like, it was the one of the most uncomfortable flights I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. We used to fly overseas and they would put me on the in the back on the end, mm -hmm. which I was happy about. But the same thing, every time I would kind of fall asleep, I would be leaning over in the aisle and the cart would come through and fucking yeah. smoke my arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't even like try and wake me up. They'd just be like, yeah. they'd hit you. And you just like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I hate flying. I hate it. Yeah. It's the big planes, the best seat to get on a big plane. If you have to sit in coaches, you know how they, they go four seats in the middle. Yeah. So they, yeah. Go, they go four seats in the middle. Right. But then when you get to the very back, the first row that goes three seats. Yeah. If you get the end seat, that row, then you can lean over and there's there's a big space there way more width yeah mm -hmm. yeah because the, they were four rows in front of you i've had that right. to Vegas a few times yeah oh best fucking best spot yeah yeah uh okay when finally when finally deciding when to start ped usage did you experience any anxiety about it if it's the right thing to do or how people will see you etc no i had no problems zero yeah i was like anxiety with peds i was like where is it just give it to me give it to me <laughs> <laughs> give it to me i want to be huge i want to be a pro fuck i don't care yeah. <laughs> i didn't i didn't care i was like actually that's not true so the first time i heard about somebody using steroids i was bouncing at a club i was like i was 20 and one of the guys i found out one of the guys was on juice i was like oh that guy's bad he's on juice i didn't i didn't know anything about it and then i started working with more bouncers and some of these guys were all fucking geared up and then doing bodybuilding shows and i'm like oh okay it's normal so i was like where's mine so then yeah. I started, so then i started it was like but at first i thought it was like a bad thing i'm like oh my god all these guys are on steroids yeah but I, don't know, I just fucking get used to it. you're around enough people that are doing it it becomes not a big deal yeah I know. yeah when i used to compete when i used to like whatever whatever i would get like to high doses um at the time i get a bit of anxiety at times like i get like a little pain in my chest and be like oh, oh shit you know, is that a heart attack? Like, you know, I start getting a little paranoid for sure. <laughs> yeah, everybody gets that for sure. I get yeah, that. And, I'm yeah, like, and, that's, and that's the thing when talking to people, like everyone experiences that. So it wasn't that abnormal to, to yeah. feel that way. I get that. And then I'm like, no, I just got gas. And you tell me every day you're going to die. L little heartburn. <laughs> you're like, if I die, Paul, take care of summer. <laughs> yeah, like every, every day I hear that. <laughs> I'm like, why? What's wrong? He's like, I feel some weird shit. Yeah. Once I once I passed 40, I was like, oh, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i don't know no no anxiety what was your highest dose paul you want to tell everybody <clears throat> if i can recall accurately um i didn't go above a thousand milligrams of test yeah i may have pushed it to like 11 maybe 12 briefly but not much higher than that um and then like with deca you know maybe 600 be about the highest i pushed it orals i'd be a little bit more conservative um like i don't think i ever went higher than I want to say two to three anadrols a day. Um, for two to three anadrols a day. I never did two to three anadrols a day. One in the morning, one at night. Did you? Yeah. Was that before we day. were friends? Uh, well, I did it. I remember the first time I did anadrol way, way back in the day. Like it was the strongest shit I ever took in my life. And you took two of those? What no, the back then I think I just took one. I was just taking one a day. That's back when I was like 19, 20, what 20, I think. I asked him how the heaviest he's ever been heaviest uh most ever i never cracked 250 he never could make fun of me all the time <laughs> really? i could never crack 250 the highest i got was like 247 248 could never get any higher oh fuck yeah. man oh. Oh, you're over you're overheating food um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all right i got a backup i think you need you need new intercooler on your fan man or on yeah your no i just got to do an override on it all right there we go yeah um Anyway, you did two anadrols. That, yeah, Paul always, like, we had a bet that he couldn't get to 250. You never Are these two anadrols of 50 milligram anadrols or 25 milligram anadrols? 50s. Uh, but at that time, I don't think it was as good anymore. Like, when I did when I did it later and I, and I went up that high with it, I wasn't getting, I definitely didn't feel it the same way I did the first time I did it back when, in the 90s, when I first started bodybuilding, like, stuff was always real. You don't have to worry about anything being yeah. fake. And uh, like stuff, most stuff was coming right from, you know, right from pharmaceutical companies. But then when things started to change and things were more underground and I did them again, when they're underground, I had a draw, I didn't feel the same, yeah, the same kick from them at all. Fuck. I never got to train with a two and a draw a day, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were training together for it. 
This I was back knew. in my competing days. I never knew you were taking that. I was coaching you. You must have been doing it on your own. No, no, you. It uh, wasn't me. Well, I, I mean, if I did, like, I, I didn't do that for a very long period. You know, that was that was just, you know. Yeah, but that wasn't my advice. I don't because I never did too. Yeah, back in no. those days, we used to. No, I didn't. No, unless I just have a really bad memory, but I'm pretty sure I never did too. Really? I mean, I might, I might have tried it like a couple times, but I don't think. Yeah, I like I, this wasn't for a long period of time or anything like that. No, I mean literally, like I might have tried it like twice. Because you remember, if we had we used to fuck our stomachs up and a draw. Yeah, I know that's why yeah, I, I can't eat. So, draw. I can't eat. No. Yeah, I, can't, I could never eat anything when I was on it, so I, I would never stay on it for very long. I usually try to switch to a different world that didn't fuck up my stomach as bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I never used growth up until like later after I stopped competing. Yeah. Because I couldn't afford it back then. I wonder if you would have been over 250 views growth. <laughs> oh, uh, the sky could have been yeah, limited. Solid 252 for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never, pounds, I finally would have got. We'll never know now, Paul. It's too late forever. I know. Well, you know, it's not too late forever. What might, do you he might have been full in that show, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, my coach would have showed up, too. So what, do you, what do you weigh right now, Paul? 230? I haven't been on a scale in a while. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess around 230. No. Oh. What do you that's weigh? Right, that's usually where I hover. Sorry, Ian. What do you weigh right now? Uh, I was 273 this morning. So I'm gonna I'm trying to get down to like 245, 240. Oh, lean mean. Yeah. What do you have right now, Ian? 264, 265. Really? So what are you competing at? 255-ish? Uh, I don't think I got that much to go. I think I might have like six pounds at absolute most. Really? Eh? So two, is that gonna be your heaviest weight ever? Yeah, it was 253, 254 in the morning, uh, the, like the lightest I got before the Olympia. Um, so I think I'll be probably like, yeah, three to four pounds up from that. Oh, guy, that's a good answer. Guy, this is, you're setting a there new uh, new precedent here. <laughs> Wait, what? You're setting a new record here. It's like an hour and a half late. Dude, I texted you that I probably wasn't going to make it at all, bro. I had a rough couple of days. You're still rough. Car. Do you want to? Do you want to just catch us next week? You're still in your car and shit. I'm. Just, I'm leaving the gym right now. I'm leaving the gym right now. Yeah, it's oh, okay. I'm, but I'm. I'm very fucking multi well, we, we need your picks for uh, the show on Saturday. Okay. Uh, you can't do this. Uh, Service is no good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Go home, guy. <laughs> first of all all right you got no service Wait, what happened you keep cutting out you're gonna have to go, right. go home and log in let me see what I, I'll, I'll, I'll just go home and bye <laughs> <laughs> like, <it's> enough. <laughs> um okay what were we talking about um, i don't remember uh oh, which, wait all right Oh, yeah. Paul, Ian's weight. You were asking him how much he weighs. Yeah, so he got about five pounds of sauce season. Eh? Yeah, I think three or four pounds. Yeah. Nice. Uh, is it possible to gain muscle this far in your career by changing your training habits? <laughs> <laughs> what? That just, the question just came up. What's yes, funny about absolutely. that? Who sent the question? Uh, Glenn Anderson or something like that. What a made up name that is. <laughs> no, I swear to God. I swear to God. It's right here. Joe Thomas. <laughs> uh, Ian, is it possible? Absolutely. So, what you're saying is even at 31, training for 10 years more? 30. 30, training for more 10 years or more, it's possible to keep growing by changing training styles and being more efficient with your training i think so yeah i think yeah. so i think so paul we've done that yeah i, I, I mean, think i've been improving lately you know what actually i can say as a matter of fact when i was when i won those two shows when we when i moved to toronto yeah my training yeah. my training changed a lot um i mean if, if anyone's been watching like i'm posting obviously way more training content that i've ever hosted my other in my life recently yeah you have yeah um you know and if you look even now i'm what two and a half weeks out and I'm still doing RDLs with six plates. I'm still yeah. benching four plus plates for good quality reps. I mean, I've never maintained this level of strength and intensity through my training, yeah. which I think is going to correlate directly to how I look on. Well, stage. look, anybody, I'll say this, anybody who thinks that changing training styles cannot elicit more growth 
probably doesn't know much about bodybuilding. And I'll say yeah. that because, and I say that because, so I reached a certain level by the time I was like 32, my drugs kind of didn't change from 30 to 40, yeah. maybe, maybe closer to 40. They came down, but most of my thirties, my drugs were the same. My eating was the same, but around 32 or 33, I met John Meadows. Mm -hmm. John Meadows changed my entire training style and 34 and 35 were probably my best growth years of my entire career. Mm -hmm. So anybody who thinks that, Oh, you've been training for 10 years. You were training for 15 years, whatever. And you can't make any more gains. That's fucking bullshit. I think or on the flip side to that, that you always, that you need to continually be in, increasing drugs to continually yield. Yeah. Progress. yeah. Like yeah. It's not like I was using 500 milligrams at 20 and then 750 and a thousand, 2000, 4,000, 8,000. Yeah. I, I'm not using any more drugs than I've used in the last 10 well, years. Basically, it, no. The thing is, there's a certain spot where more drugs doesn't do anything. That's why I said yeah. for, for from 30 to 40, my drugs are the same, if not less, because I had done so much. Like I already experimented with really high doses in my late twenties mm -hmm. and I realized it wasn't helping. So I actually came back down Yeah, and my drugs didn't go up. So yeah. The answer is not always more drugs or more GH or more this. And anybody who thinks that's the only answer obviously didn't, doesn't know how to train. I, th or... I think what the real answer is, is optimizing everything and finding the optimal place for you. And I think for me, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I found a level of drugs where it's, I feel good and I feel healthy and it's still eliciting, eliciting progress. Um, you know, and that my training has continually improved <laughs> that where, you know, we've, I've still been learning what works best for me. And, you know, obviously having better training partners are almost invaluable in bodybuilding, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, um, I did know. so much better when I wasn't training with Paul. Like my yeah, bullshit. <laughs> I've, I've set like... you up all those years. He had just coast for a little while. Um, <laughs> you know what I think is something two people miss out on? I think like stress in life. Like when you're yeah. stressed out, you got like a stressful life or whatever reason it might be. It's hard to to get better and, and uh, you know, keep, yeah. keep progressing. And yeah. I don't think you realize at the time that that's what's holding you back. But like, once you get to a good place in life where you're pretty comfortable where you're at, you know, your stress levels are relatively low. I think, you know, that's where, at least in my experience, that's where I've seen good progress. Yeah. I mean, Ian's already talked about this. We did that whole balance argument that we had. Yeah. That entire argument was based on the fact that his 2018 year wasn't as good. 2019. Because, or 2019 wasn't as good because he was not having enough fun or not enjoying his career or not, you know, whatever word you want to use. Yeah. Whereas maybe that could be the reason why your training feels better. Everything feels better too. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, th and I think that's the same. Like I feel like I did in, in 18, you know, where I'm enjoying every day. Like I wake up every day where I'm super excited to train. I'm excited to see, you know, where I've like, I want to push my lifts. I want to improve every day. I want to look better every day. I want to be stronger every day. You know, I, I enjoy the challenge of training every single day, you know? Yeah. So I, I just... look forward to, you know, even if it's silly, like I look forward to being able to film a few clips and, you know, yeah. show my progress and show my improvement in training on Instagram. Like I, you know, I, these are things I enjoy now, you know, which I never did before. I guess yeah. the, the, the ultimate point I'm trying to make is this, there are more ways to get better than just thinking I got to increase my test or increase my GH or whatever, whatever drug you're using. Cause there's a certain point where those drugs hit their limits and more is not going to make you look better. So and the to... limits are not as high as people think. Like it's not no. like taking two grams of test and a gram of trend is that limit, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it might be 800 to a thousand tests and 300 trend. I mean, yeah. like, you're not, it's not like, it's just like more, 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 you know, but I mean, right. it's all, it's also not, I mean, look, so that's drugs aside. We talked about this on the last podcast, Ian. You're talking to fucking Patrick every day. Every day. So when you talk about optimizing things, that's as optimal as it gets. You're literally talking to your coach every day and he's giving you a diet every day. You're training every day. That's peak optimism. Like or yeah, optimize, I mean, optimizing. You can't, off, you know, an off training day and, you know, we, the food and then it was the cardio was based. Like he's like, okay, we'll do this cardio. And if you feel like this or your weights at this, by this time, do another set of cardio, like, you know, it's, it's very strategic day to day. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, so like, go ahead. The bottom line for people listening is don't, don't listen to anybody who's going to tell you it's just drugs is the fucking answer. It's part of the answer. It's part of an, a, a total equation, That's but right. it gets to a point where it's just, it is a constant 
and your training and your nutrition are the variables, you yes, know? Yeah. Exactly. You know, you're I feel like manipulating the training and the food day to day or week to week or month to month to elicit continued progress and your drugs end up being just a constant. I, that's right. I don't even think about drugs now at this point. It's just, yeah. I take what I take. It was the same as last year, same as the year before. It, it gets me where I need to be. It's yeah. obviously an important part of bodybuilding, but it's not an ever-changing formula of like confusing this, you know? It's just, yeah. this is it. I take the same stack. Okay. And now we worry about the training and the food and the things that really elicit the day-to-day progress. It's, it's funny you say that. I think a lot of people think that though. They're like, what stack is he on? What is yeah, this yeah. crazy maze of drugs? It's like, I don't know, man, some tests and some EQ. And yeah, some- they think that we're doing like, you know, like test every 17th hour with, you know, <laughs> friend in micro Two doses. weeks of this and one week of this. And yeah. Then- yeah. And then some oh, peptides at the right time. Halo every seventh day, and then Anadrol. The like, it's like you know, the, there's no wizardry like this. We just no, take yeah. the same shit people day. think people think the pros have this magic formula of drugs that uh, no one else knows about, it's and that, and that pros state. only have like fancy, fancy farm only crazy the best stuff. Drugs, you know? Yeah, like, everyone else gets the shit, and the pros get the good yeah, stuff. Yeah, they get the, the, we get the good stuff, and the, the plebs get everything else. <laughs> right? Yeah, the peasants. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, um, okay. Oh, do you cut your food like steak with your dominant or non-dominant hand? You know, the spoon and fork debate has gone like mainstream huge. now. Huge. Yeah. It's on like, it was on some comedy podcast yeah. somewhere. They were really? like, yeah. I'm like, is that our fault? Did they, did they <laughs> somebody snag it from our, let's pretend. <laughs> do you cut your food like steak with your dominant or non-dominant hand? I put the fork in my dominant, the knife in my non-dominant. I'm the Me opposite. Too. So you cut with, you use your knife in your dominant right hand. hand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm left left handed, so I always, I, so I, do I, you, Paul. I don't cut with my left. You cut with your right. That's your dominant yeah. hand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant, uh, yeah, sorry. I thought I had, a, I thought you were talking. Yeah, I'm left handed. I feel yeah. like I do all the food things the same as all right handed people. So, so, Ian, you cut, so Ian, you cut your food with your right, your knife in the right hand. Yes. And you're left-handed. Yeah. yeah. But, but now see, you're like, left-handed. I was just with a spoon, I only use my left hand, obviously. Yeah. And my fork, I eat with my left hand, but I was cut with my right. Are yeah. you left-handed everything you do? Yeah. Really? He I also, mean, you also don't know if you jerk off with your left. I no, jerk I don't want to know that. I just because it seems like a lot of people <laughs> I know who are left-handed do a lot of other things with the right still. Yeah, I mean, like, Almost I'm like not... dexterous. Yeah, like, I, I obviously do the main things... Like I write and I, you know, do that kind of stuff with my left hand. I jerk off and I write with my left hand. Everything else is kind of like whatever, you know. If you're going to shoot a basketball, which hand would you use? Uh, if I was just going to take like a one-handed shot? Yeah, like a free throw. A free throw? Yeah, it would be my 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 left hand in front, yeah. It would, eh? Huh. So you use your left to... And like when I golf, I swing left-handed. I hockey stick left-handed. He already said he does. What are you keep, are you trying I'm to keep... Are, are you trying to? Are you trying to picture it? You're like, let me, let me picture... Are you sure it's the left? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see it clearly enough. Do it. Tell me again. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. It would be so awkward. It doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> but, I, but I wipe my ass with my right hand. That's weird. What? Yeah. That's so That's strange. The only thing you don't do with your left. Hey, can I ask you a question? Listen, I've I'm, never I'm in my entire life wiped my ass with my left hand. Wait, I'm sorry to talk oh, about wiping ass. I really don't want to talk about shit again. But I, this <laughs> this this question came up in my head, and I have to know. It's two. It's a two parter. Do you shit with your girl in the room or not? And I know that we I've asked this before, but no. I don't know if I asked you guys. No, I prefer not to. Okay, like in the room, no. Like I, like if I was shitting and sh- like I was sitting on the toilet taking a shit, and she opened the door. Say I ran out of toilet paper, and I like. I yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't care, but yeah, like, yeah. I won't shit with the door open while she's like doing her makeup. No, no. like yeah. I would obviously piss. I would, if she was in there, I would go and take a piss. I don't care, but yeah, I don't shit with the door. No, I was just wondering, cause I have a friend, Paul, you know who he is, who shits openly comfortably with his girlfriend in the, in the b- bathroom with him. No, I don't like that. But no, I, I was, but I was wondering to myself, does he wipe with her in there? Cause that's kind of a, that about. would be weird. The that's kind of a private. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's kind of the private part of the shitting is the one yeah, yeah. Like, yeah that's a, yeah. that's a bit weird yeah okay. i had to do it once when tony was in the shower and i had to go really bad yeah but you have two bathrooms uh for i think downstairs one wasn't working at the time i forget why now <laughs> okay but uh there was a reason for it i couldn't do but, it no yeah, I I, do what it. if you had to i wouldn't thank you i would shit my pants, pants. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's but I feel like I feel like Melissa would have absolutely no issue shitting in front of me. Really? really? No. I don't think my wife shits. <laughs> I've never once walked in, you know, smelt anything, nothing. Except for yeah. once when she was sick. I don't think she cares. Yeah. You don't care, right? Yeah, she says she doesn't care. Really? That's good. That's good. I thought it would be the opposite, if anything. No. Huh. That's good that you guys are at that place. She'll literally, she would, she has like, she would do anything in front of me. She doesn't care at all. Yeah, but I don't think it's about getting to a place, Paul, because I think, you know, me and Summer have been married 15 years, but I don't want to see her shit. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, you know, and she wouldn't, and she wouldn't let me. Like, I, I'm like you, like, I don't even know if she goes to the bathroom. Right? I, <laughs> See, the I, hers, like, I, wouldn't even be, I wouldn't even be able to tell, like, cause she's sitting down. Like, I, I would just like, I would never know if she's shitting or pissing. It's like, well, okay, you know, yeah, it's not like us, eh? It's like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me and Thomas, I'm, there's too much sound effects when I'm taking a shit. Like, yeah, me and Fudge joke. When we were younger, Fu, I just have a little condo and I used to have a little house. We used to talk about all the time. Whenever we have like a, you know your girlfriend over at the time, you'd have to like put the radio on really loud in the bathroom while you're shitting, yeah. or or keep flushing the toilet to try yeah. and drown out the sound. Flushing the toilet doesn't work. Did you have a stereo in your bathroom? I put it? a stereo in my bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> I put it on the back of the toilet. I just go in and turn the fucking thing up to full. <laughs> it's like a concert there. I, I don't care. Those, I remember those days when you would be young enough that like. If you'd have a, a new girl over and like you had to shit, you would hold it in all night until like your oh. stomach was in so much pain, you know? I shit my Good. pants once. Yeah. I, um, remember the story, Fred? When I first started dating my wife, uh, she came to my house and uh, I don't know, we were hanging out, whatever, and I had a small house and like the bathroom and that was, you know, it was, it, there was no oh. privacy. So anyway, I had to shit really bad, but I knew she was going to leave soon. So I'm waiting for her to wait, and just waiting, waiting for her to leave. She finally left. And then as I'm walking to the door, I walk her up, then I'm like trying to run back in the house to go shit. I farted and I shit myself. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Okay. We got, can we get through next week's podcast without talking about shit? <laughs> I know it's my fault because I brought it up, but people love it. Let's try and get through yeah. one. Um, top three leg exercises. <clears throat> top leg, pre- leg press. press. What'd you say? Squats, leg press, hack squat. I don't know. What's your favorite? Like in, in, favorite? What's your favorite three in order? In order? Yeah. <sighs> okay, are we talking quad or just leg as a whole? This is leg. Okay, mine would probably be. <sighs> I'm gonna say le- leg press, squat, pendulum squat. I-, I would probably do Smith squat, hack squat, RDL. Oh, I'm going to say safety squat. I really like those. What was the last one again? RDLs. Straight leg deads. You guys scare the fuck out of me when you do those, by the way. Why? Because that's how I tore my hamstring the first time. When I see you doing those Six fucking, legs. those deadlifts where you, you don't, the stiff legs where you don't touch the ground, you, you're doing five, six plates. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, this yeah. just, it scares the fuck out of me when I see that shit. It scares me doing it, too. <laughs> Why do you do? Why do you do it then? Because I can. <laughs> yeah, for no, for now. <laughs> hey, Be man. careful, man. Um. Okay, Paul. What's your top three? You didn't say. Uh, leg press for sure. Um, I like hack squat and probably Smith, Smith squats. I don't like freak a barbell squats. So I love I love Smith squats. Yeah. How about that? Like fucking, how about barbell. that leg press we got? Eh, that fucking leg. That, press. That, that's awesome for Actually, sure. You know what I gotta say? I'm gonna take out my uh, my RDLs and I'm gonna put in the adductor machine. You're lying. Yeah. Probably my one of my favorite leg machines, which I think is the most underutilized and makes the most difference to someone's look of a leg. Really? Can I make your pussy tighter? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Good, good girl. <laughs> it's Not great for the vaginal tightness too. Yeah. <laughs> imagine imagine it worked like that, Paul. Imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay let's see should athletes in every sport be able to take peds no no this is a better one most enjoyable outing with your significant others what is considered a fun night out hmm dinner and drinks for me yeah it sounds sounds boring but that's what i like to do i like to go out have two or three drinks it just makes me feel good not drunk, just like feel good and have dinner. Yeah. I think that's like for us, what, what would be like good, like in the off season, like we do that and then we go, you know, to somewhere and buy dessert stuff and come home and eat it. Yeah. 
Yeah, you also usually- go out and have dinner and a few drinks. You get a little buzz on. Yep. And might stop at the grocery store or like at we are we live in a, like a little small community here where we have a place called Cart Creamery. It's like a, a um, an ice cream place that's just local to here. That's like the best ice cream ever. Yeah. So like you know get get a pint of that on the way home. Come home, watch a movie, and eat fucking Cart yeah. Creamery. Yeah. Like that's that. like I wonder if that's a bodybuilding thing. That's exactly what me and Summer do. Yeah. I don't think it's just a bodybuilder thing, but yeah. That's like because we'll hit like this Italian restaurant. We'll have a couple drinks. Yeah. But we usually like, you know, you leave the restaurant at like 10 o'clock. I'm like, you know, yeah, yeah. just catch a movie or something while you eat some snacks. Yeah. yeah. Paul, what about you? Same yeah, thing? Same thing. And just yeah. sex at the end. There's no, I then, whatever. There's no sex at the end for you. Well, no. I'm too, too you've usually had a few you've usually had too many drinks and you're bloated from, <laughs> yeah. from eating too many snacks and you're like, fuck there's this, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my seatbelt machine on. Yeah, you're, I can. You're. I can see your guy that falls asleep on the couch and snores loud on the couch, eh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, um, but I'll. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I do <laughs> snore when I when I fall asleep like that too. Yeah. What would you do if fear was not a factor and you could not fail? Oh, geez, if fear was I, a factor. I already fucking did it, and I'm doing it. Yeah, I can't okay. even think of anything I would have done differently. Well, I mean fear was a factor when i started bodybuilding everyone's like you're not going to make it you're not going to make any money no one's going to fucking know you. you're from windsor canadians don't get seen blah 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 the list goes on and on and on and on i was like fuck you i'm doing it anyway that topic do you think even, that's still a thing even paul my best friend was like yeah this guy sucks <laughs> before we were friends yeah <laughs> do you think that's still a thing like the, or do you think now with social media being so big that like no. the move to the U.S. thing matters? I don't think. It I don't think it matters at all anymore. I think it's absolutely like not even a thing. I well, where you live? think about it, the two, the two big, the two, two of the Reagan biggest names. <laughs> yeah, Reagan and Chris, two of the biggest names yeah. in bodybuilding are from Canada. Yeah. It has no. I don't and think. Me. Well, well, I'm. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> they're in the millions of followers. It's a yeah, Chris bit. has like fucking four million. It's yeah. Yeah, I mean James Hollingshead's from fucking the UK. Everybody knows who he is. Like, yeah, I don't think it matters anymore. That's the the wonderful thing is I don't back like a fucking old man back in my day. No, yeah. um, back in the day. Yeah, no. If you weren't from the fucking US, nobody took a look at you. Yeah, if you didn't and, and, internet. and companies didn't want to sign you because they're like, oh, we got to fly this guy from Canada, and there's gonna be passport yeah. issues and blah blah blah. Yeah, so you're you're fucked. Yeah, before so that, the, before the internet. So that was fear. And then there's fear, like starting your own supplement company. Like, oh, there's so many supplement companies. How are you going to make money? There's like, you're one of a million, blah, blah, blah. Like, or podcast. They're like, there's so many, no one's going to listen to an hour long podcast. It's stupid. So I don't know. Fear doesn't, fear doesn't dictate. No, I haven't done it all. I just. No, I'm saying the things that you've done that you were scared of, you did it. Yeah. I mean, fear is a factor in anything good. I mean. Well, if it wasn't scary and it was easy, everyone would do it, you know? Yeah. And everyone would do it successfully. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ian, you, uh, the fear is there because people fail. Did you have any fear in, in getting into bodybuilding, Ian, or just you, you kind of no. just knew you were going to be good at it? Yeah. Or you were too young to care? Uh, both. There's obviously a little bit of young and naive. And then there was also, I was really good right from the get go, you know? So I didn't ever yeah. have that, you know? Yeah. Paul? Anything you've been scared of to do, or you just kind of follow your fears? Uh, well, no, I, I always when I, when I got scared about it, like I bailed out. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I was really, I mean, I told you the story before, like what I, what I, what I thought I was gonna maybe do something with bodybuilding, and then I did that show that Greg Who Kovacs beat you? and Fred, Greg Kovacs beat you, and Fred and Tiwi, yeah, and I was like, uh, the rest, but rest then when piece, I, Greg. but then when I, I told then that, that that's when I decided I need to find myself a, at least try to build towards a career. Cause you know, I was going to need something to fall back on. Yeah, so I, mean, I did. And then when I got the career, then I went back into bodybuilding. Yeah. I mean, I think that would scare anybody though. If they were trying to be a pro and they fucking walked into like Greg Kovacs. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking maybe. But I mean, a lot of people would have made him hungrier too. And me, it scared the fuck out of me and got me no. out of sport for 10 years. <laughs> but in all honesty, think about it. If you're 20 years old or 22 years old, whatever, and you do a show and Greg Kovacs wins, you're like, maybe I'm not cut out for this. He didn't even win for it. He got second. Who won? Freddie? Fred. Yeah. I mean, Freddie was a good bodybuilder back in the day too, though. He was so. really good for yeah. an amateur, yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah. So I don't have the same stories as you guys. <laughs> well, that's not true. You had kids. Well, you're scared yeah, to have I guess kids. It's scary in a lot of different ways, but you're, you were scared to have kids, and you were scared yeah. to get married, and you were scared to get married. Yeah. Yeah. And you were scared to move in with your fucking wife. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was actually having anxiety attacks when well, I when, uh, when she was if, pregnant first. If time. you think about it, like when you and Tony met, you were kind of like Guy. Yeah, I was. I was. You know, uh, I think I was thirty six or seven when I met Tony. Yeah, and you kind of had uh, you kind of had your own place and your own shit going on. Yeah, and I've been a bachelor for a while, so I was kind of set my ways. Yeah, yeah so it took me. It was a transition for me, a big transition. Yeah. Yeah. Were you married before your current wife? No, no. no I I only lived with one other girl in my life, and that was just a stupid, you know. So yeah. I should, it was it was you know I knew it wasn't going anywhere in that relationship. Just with both in a place to live at the time, so we moved in together. But it right. was never like with the thought of getting married down the road or anything. Yeah. He was like, so I didn't think I was ever going to get married. And then when I, the, but then I started thinking about it more and more in my late thirties. And then I was lucky enough to find someone that, you know, have you lived with any other girls for that? Girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah. I lived with someone for five years. Oh, really? Yeah. But it wasn't, wasn't going to go anywhere, but I think Paul saw that I settled down. That's why he decided to settle down. <sighs> he was like, ah, no. I <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you and Summer had split for a while when I met Tony. Oh, that is true. Actually, we were apart when you met Tony. Yeah. yeah yeah no tony was the first girl i met that i really liked spending time with yeah like there was girls i could spend time with for a couple of weeks couple of months but then i would get sick of them but i don't know my wife i just clicked with her i could like talk to her about anything you know we enjoyed each other's company and you know so you were like you were like seinfeld back in the day you ever seen I that? Used to you seinfeld at right all you? what you watch seinfeld at all or no i watched it yeah you ever see the episode where he's like she eats her peas one at a time and he, he yes. dumps the girl. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was Paul. He's was like, Paul, he, yeah. he would meet a girl and be like, ah, I can't, just can't. Get some bullshit. It would be some yeah. bullshit fucking thing. Be like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I'd date a girl for a month or two that I'd find something wrong and I'd be like, nah, that's it. Yeah. And then I, would, I wouldn't even have the courage to break up with him. I would just stop answering my phone for a few weeks and hope they would stop calling. <laughs> yeah, Melissa's the only girl I've ever lived with, but I was also like quite young when we, you know. Yeah. You guys from are you guys? You guys meet in high school or after high school? Uh, well, we went to the same high school. We're the same age, graduated the same year, but we were very, very different social circles in high school. Like I was like cool kid that played sports and would, like smoke cigarettes with my friends on the weekends and drink and fucking party smoke and cigarettes with my friends. You know, yeah. and like did I did like okay? I was like you know a B student kind of thing, you know. Um, and she was like, you know, a little quieter. Like her friends would like you know close knit, but like more like the cool, cool kids, you know um and they you know weren't like into the, like the, the partying drugs smoking fucking kind of you know world that i was into um and then after high school we met through a mutual friend like a friend that was like in my social circle but also kind of in melissa's um and then a few years after high school we kind of like connected and yeah so how long's it been for you guys now uh we started uh, the uh nine years this nine years now really you guys are the same paul aren't you and tony nine years 12 12 married for what five six six yeah we're 2012 we started together and then we got married in 2018 so we've been married for three years this winter fuck i think i'm going on 10 years no i think i'm you know, summer you've been with summer longer than i've been with tony i know i think no no i mean married oh i think this is nine years married really yeah that's a fucking long time man it's a big anniversary next year i know i gotta do something special yeah. The fuck am I gonna what are you do? Gonna do? I'm gonna take her to Fiji. Get her in your hot, bro. I'm gonna buy her a car. <laughs> <laughs> that you're gonna drive. That I'll drive most of the time. Buy her, <laughs> buy her a Ferrari. Like, it's for you, yeah. I swear. Buy her a Ferrari. <laughs> you know, we wanted this so bad, right? <laughs> uh does Regan Grimes Regan Grimes make the top ten at the O this year? No. Oh, Ian, you'd love to hate on Regan. I'm not hating on Regan. Do you want me to lie? Yes. Okay. I, want you, I want you one time to just be like, okay, yeah. Both of you now, will Regan make the top 10? Not this year. I think there's I, a I think you possibility. Potentially could get there. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see him get there. And I okay, think he's potentially to get there. That's what, that's what, what I want. List off 10 guys. Let's not, list, list off 10 guys right now. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Can I just say it the way I, I think the way Paul said it, it makes the most sense. Right. I, would, I would like to see Regan realize his potential. Yes. Absolutely. That's all. Sure. That's what. That's what I think. That's I, what I, I think Regan has tons of potential, and yeah. I think for someone that's so social media affluent to become a successful bodybuilder in the bodybuilding realm is great. I think that's yeah. great. It brings more people to you know. He's got a very good positive platform. It brings more people to bodybuilding, which I think is nothing but good. Um, you know, but do I think his physique right now is at the place to be a top ten Olympia? No. 
Yeah. Agreed. Do I think yeah. he could be in the future? Absolutely. Yeah. I think for him, the sky's the limit. I think he's got great structure. <laughs> he's tall. He's broad. He has a good back, which not a lot of guys have. He's very complete. He doesn't have any mm-hmm. major yeah. glaring weaknesses. You know, whereas most of his flaws fall are things that are fixable with conditioning. I think it's absolutely possible. But in my honest opinion, no, right now, I, I think how competitive bodybuilding is, especially this year, making the top 10 will be very difficult. I think Agreed. everything you're saying is spot on. I think the way I feel about it is I just, I, let me, I'll put it the most simple way I know how. I'm rooting for Regan. I yeah. just, I just want to see Regan do well. I don't, He's a nice I, I want to see Regan yeah. nail it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If Regan came in, peeled out of his mind, you know, full as a house, like look, just looking exactly like we all want to see him. I'd be very happy. You know, yeah, yeah. Look, I've been a critic of Regan and people give me shit for it. And I, you know, I, I do this all the time with, with a lot of people and I get, you know, shit on it for it. But um, you know, obviously I support all the Canadian bodybuilders and I want to see them all do well. I mean, I like Antoine, I like Quentin, I like Regan, I like Joe Seaman, I like all these guys. I want to see them all do well. Um, but you know, obviously when I put on the spot, I'd try and be as honest as possible. So I don't yeah. know why Joe Seaman reminds me of Jay Cutler. Yeah. I mean, you said that, crazy. Right? It's big, crazy quads, you know, kind of a wider waist, but good ab development. Um, you know, and it's that quiet, kind of like quiet, mysterious mentality. He's got a similar physique to, to the way I see his physique is very similar. I think his waist is a little wider than Jay's was. That might be the, the only yeah. point that's holding him back. And I think he's in a different era. I think I think his physique when I was competing would, yeah, have, would, would have placed would have placed him higher. Yeah, for sure. I think I think now they're like waist your waistline is such a big deal that you know. Yeah, he did pretty good in his debut though, didn't he? Has he, he competed more than shows. I mean, he was he does well. He top five in that Toronto Pro where I came second. And then has he done another show since then? Yeah, he's done a couple. So he did uh, California. I think he's done once or twice. Uh, once he's done chicago or one of those ones but yeah he's he's done a few i think he's doing arnold uk later in the year so that'll is be he? his first show this year i see him um, all the time because we train we live in the same city so oh he's from ottawa yeah like we were training at the same gym this this whole time at 613 left here so I, I was seeing him basically every day i judged joe quite a few times and he would always get better every year yeah. his conditioning was always spot on but he yeah. got bigger and better every single year and he, and he, and he overcame get, that waist. you're in the spots that mattered and his waist got better yeah, it you know, when he was younger, he his waist was actually much worse. And if you look at the pictures and his his waistline, he learned how to control it and pose around it well. And then you know he blew up his legs, got bigger through the back and the shoulders, and the things got right. to accentuate the, the look. So he's done very well with what he has for sure. And the guy is yeah. strong as a fucking house, and he he's very diligent with his his training and his food, and he's a, he's a hard worker for sure. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, we'll do one more and then we'll go. Yeah. Um. By the way, do you see how nice and tanned I'm getting here? See this? <laughs> Look at this. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> when, do you, when do you leave? When do you fly out? Uh, two weeks from yesterday, so the 2nd of August. Oh, I just go a few days before? <laughs> oh, there's I, I, go down, I go down on the Monday, so like five days before, yeah. Okay. Look at this guy. Shows up for the last question. <laughs> Look at this. How fucking late. This is a record for late. You literally waited till the last question to show well, up. No, it's good. So I texted you today. I didn't think I was going to make it at all. I told you that. Okay, pull up the Chicago list. It's I know. I know. That's what we're going to do. So, okay, here we Look go. Look how excited Ian just got for me to possibly lose something. I've never this is what we're going to do. I didn't partake in this one. So, this is what we're going to do. And then we're going to go. Uh, guy is going to pick his picks. And then we're going to go. I'll say goodbye. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Before Guy picks his pick, Guy is requesting to know. Whose picks for whose picks? Nope. No, you no. can't know. Fuck that. We all Don't agree. Don't fucking talk me because I missed the podcast. We all agreed <laughs> that you have to pick blind. We did. <laughs> Paul Paul picked by himself. No no help. Yeah. And, and my picks weren't like Paul's anyway, so nobody copied it. Paul picked first, so. Yeah. And I don't agree with any of Paul's you, picks you anyway. Know, you know these guys in the lineup, so it's a fair okay. it's a fair. Okay. Ian, relax, spark plug. You're like a little oh. firecracker lately. Hey, we've been on this for two hours here. We've been waiting for you. Dude, you I had to pick top ten. Oh, relax. Oh, man, this is going to be tough. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, I'm just – don't don't take it away. I'm not going to take it a away. fucking chaw, bud. You got to pack a fucking <laughs> tobacco just to fucking – Yeah. <laughs> it's got to get those juices. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait, what's the bet first? We don't know yet. Why don't you start picking and then we'll decide. That'll be picked at a later date. No, we'll pick it before we go. Just Ian, think all right, about all right. it. All. I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna shout out names, write them down in no particular order, and then I'm gonna put them in order. Okay. No, just put them in order. Who do you have first? I can't. I just, just, 
Just go with it. Roly. Roly. Okay. Number two. Hunter. Hunter. Number three. We're gonna be here all night at this fucking. Pace. I think you should be for. A <laughs> I was I'm, gonna. I'm, say I'm, I'm looking. I mean, Brett Wilkins is looking good. Hassan has been going at it. Max Charles is usually up there. I'm just thinking. Don't say anything, anybody. <laughs> wait, wait! This is such fucking horseshit. Why? <laughs> You're a grown man. You see the list. You know the. You know the players. No, the, hold on. What is go you, there's something missing that I'm I'm I that you guys are fucking with me about. No, everybody's there. There's nobody on the list that we don't know about. Why did you say don't say a word? Well, I just want to make sure nobody helps just, you. Just read over the list well. Make sure you see all the names. I don't know who some of these guys are. I the number one, don't know. Number Doesn't matter. Three, I don't know. Number four, I don't know. Five, don't know. It's okay. Uh, it's Joseph okay. Mackey, I know. I don't know Justin Mackey. Yes, you do. He's sponsored by Hostile. Okay, yes, I do. Zach Merkel, I don't know. Yes, you do. Okay. He beat Nick at the Nationals. Salam Alama Muhammad Alama Lakum. <laughs> don't, don't be an idiot. Um, I don't know him. Well, Hassan, I know. Muhammad, Shab oh, Siobhan. Okay. Uh, that's what fucking Fuad was saying. Yeah. He kept Siobhan out of it. I got it. I didn't say anything. You son of a bitch. Okay. So. <laughs> son of a bitch. So now I know. That's just, so, so you have Shabon in second then? <sighs> no, hold on. <laughs> this is making me nervous. I don't like this bet. We haven't even bet anything yet. Yeah. I'm going to go Roly one. I'm going to go Hunter two, Shabon three. Hunter, Shabon. Okay, four. <clears throat> uh, my four or five is going to flip block between Max and Brett. Pick one for four. I don't really do like top three. Relax. No, we're doing 10. Yeah. What? We picked yeah. 10. It's a deep lineup. We picked 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not picking. I'm picking five. Pick 10. <laughs> I don't know fucking 10 names. What's four? Pick four. Uh, Max. Max, fourth. Okay, five. Brett. Brett. Very yes. close to my picks. So you're both going to be fucking wrong. Six. <laughs> you're going to have two nipples pierced. <laughs> What's that? You're going to have two nipples pierced. <laughs> uh, we, didn't, we didn't say that yet. We didn't bet yet. We didn't make the bets yet. Oh, wait, hold on. I, I totally miss Hassan, so I'm redoing my pick now. Okay, what's what's where? Uh, read them out to me. Roly, Hunter, Shabon, Max, Brett. Uh, Hassan before Max. Oh. Hassan. Are these picks final? Max, yes. I can't change mine? Wilkins. Okay, so you have... Roly, Hunter, Shabon, four. Slow down, slow down, slow, slow down there. I'm reading your. I'm reading your. I know. Story. Just slow down. I'm just thinking. Just slow down. Okay. Well, I'm you're on number seven. Just read them off one through six. That's right? what I was gonna do, and you told but me you were out. you were fucking banana clipping them. Just okay, fine. Time. Number one, <laughs> Roly. Number two, Hunter. Number three, Shabon. Number four, Hassan. Five, Max. Six, Wilkins. I like that. And his name is Wilkin, not Wilkins. Okay, Wilkin. Brett Wilkin. Is he going to be offended? Well, we'll correct it, and then it's Listen, okay. Listen, my name has been butchered for 20 years straight. I'm sure. <laughs> Bro, I'm people, have, people have fucking left out letters in my name. I'm my name is butchered by Guy on the fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Shut up, Ian. <laughs> Ian. Ian? <laughs> okay, you're number seven. What's number seven? I don't know these. Can you guys help? I really don't know the rest of these. No, guys. we're not going to help you. <sighs> okay, I'll help myself. 
<laughs> don't don't go look. I don't know arm. what they look like. Can you help me then? I'll be <laughs> fine. Honest. Okay, I'll, fine. I'll just, say, I'll just say that the guys that were also chosen in the top ten are Phil Clare, Joseph Mackey, Justin Mackey. Okay, I was gonna put and Zach Merkel. Yeah, and Zach Merkel. Sorry, and Eslam. And Eslam. Uh, did anyone pick Eslam in their top ten? Uh, I think I'll, I had him tenth. I'll add him tenth. Yeah. I'll put Joseph Mackey at seven. Joe Mackey. It's a good pick so far. I'll put. Yeah, he copied mine. <laughs> he didn't hear yours. I know. I'll, I'll put Justin Mackey in eight. Islam in nine, Zach in 10. Huh. Islam, nine. Merkel in 10. Merkel, Merkel. You shit the bed on the last four there. <laughs> Does, wait, it's, I don't give a fuck. Why? You shit the bed on your. Yeah, your, you fucked up your last four. The other seven are good. No, six, six seven, eight, nine, ten is wrong. What's, so what's the wager? What, what did I do? What's six, seven, eight, nine, ten? You got your top five right. We'll just stick with that. I thought that's what we normally go by anyway. Yeah, but I figure there's so many people in this one, we should just go through to top 10. Yeah, but I'm saying we did top 10, but only the top it five. It won't down. matter because I think you guys are all different in your top five enough that someone will win within the top five anyways. Can, mm-hmm. can, can we, can, so who? No, me and, me and Guy have the same top five. Exact same oh, really? top five? Yeah, exact same top okay, five. Guy, you got, you got to revamp your six, seven. I wasn't on the podcast. I came in fucking blind. No, he, he so I leave. ain't changing shit. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Paul's going to lose, have, have another nipple pierced. Oh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, what, what's the wager well, here? Well, you might want to take a lot of shirtless selfies before the next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put two big bandages on, anyways, guy. Yeah. What, uh, what? I gotta say, go Paul, Paul's got a lot of faith in in Wilkin. I Wait, do. Where, where does he have Fifth. Where, where does where does where does he have Brett? Brett's good, Five. man. Fifth. Brett's 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 got a crazy physique. Nobody said Brett's not good. All I said was there's a there's a lot of fucking good guys in the show. This is, yeah, there's, 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 a, there's a heavy for Brett. There's a stacked show. Yeah. The main difference was I didn't have Hassan in the top five. You guys both did. Yeah. And he's we... been in the top five every show, bro. Sorry? He's been in the top five every show. I know. The show, but it's also his third or fourth show. So, you know. Yeah, but he's progressively getting better. He's not getting worse. Yeah. Paul has Hassan sixth. Ooh, Paul. I know. But I thought these weren't final. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. I knew, <laughs> I knew you were going to get talked out of your picks. Oh, no, no. I'll stick with what I got. They know it is. I love yeah. how I came in blind and I got everybody nervous. You Not me. You, you, you didn't get me nervous. Y'all well, have, we have the same picks, but we can't lose. That's right. You okay, can't so lose. I haven't lost yet. I'm fucking killing this shit. No, you haven't. I know you're doing I mean, good. Neither have I. Relax. <laughs> lucky. What's that? Neither have I. Yeah, you have. The bet that I shaved my head was not was my was self inflicted. I did it myself. And what was the other one? You lost last week. You got second. Yeah, but I didn't lose the bet. You didn't lose the, the no. Bet. But neither did Ian. Yeah, well, Ian didn't lose either. Yeah, but there's not, there's, there's, not, there's only one loser. The there's, loser that there's, has only, to get there's only one winner. winner. There's only one winner. No, there's three. There's three winners. No, there's well, only one, one guy getting this. Because there's only one loser. So, the, so what, what is it? First, second, third place, and fourth place? Yes. So, I'm very competitive, guy. It has to be something in it for me. <laughs> All right, let's All right. go. Because uh, Ian's dieting. What's, Paul, what's the wager? Uh, guy, did you have another cheat meal today? Uh, yesterday. Fuck, it's like every week. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. No, no. It was on. Uh, like every day's a cheat su- day. Sunday, me. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sorry, Sunday. It's a good diet. I like your diet. <laughs> What'd you have? breakfast again but then it was crazy so i woke up i was 207.8 and then i had i uh, went to the diner at ham and cheese omelet home fries uh big thing of french toast and syrup. Like having your cheats as your first meal today yeah it's yeah. so hard for me man i, can, I couldn't do it yeah no. it, it, it does fuck me a little bit with my appetite but so and then i had toast a muffin and then i had like a chicken and rice meal then i had like a monster shake and then uh, I don't know if I, I think I might have had another meal, but then before bed, I had 12 ounces of skirt steak, which is like an extremely, extremely, extremely fatty cut of meat. And but it's like one of my favorite because it tastes awesome. I had 12 ounces of that, a cup of rice, went to bed, woke up. I didn't gain even a, I was 207.8 on the fucking dot again. Yeah. It's my metabolism just cranks when I eat. Yeah. 
but it's so hard for me to eat some like all that food. I just I I felt like I weighed two twenty yesterday. Like that's how full I felt. It's a nice feeling. All right, well, guy, it's great to see you for five minutes. And you're doing Tampa, right? Yeah, I'll see you there. What are you going straight to? Because I'm going to uh, uh, Florida a week early, but I'm going to Boca first. Are you flying in early, or what are you doing? I'm flying on the Monday, so the second to Tampa, though. Yeah, to Tampa. I get to Tampa. I think on like Tuesday. Yeah, I go on Monday. So. All right. Well, I'll talk to you before now. Yeah, we'll touch base. All right, guys. Okay, bye. See yeah. you guys. Love you. Later. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.